Yeah, so here is session three, everyone. Woo! We made it two sessions with everyone showing up on time. You know, no big deal. It's, it's yeah, it's a record somewhere for someone. <laughs> uh, who wants to go over what happened last week? And if we want. Okay. Long story short, we went to get some herbs, you know, and then Nathan uh made big stink about us getting herbs because a big centipede thing came out of the ground and we were being stubborn trying to help him gwildrick tried to aggressively retreat me and i was swinging out of his arms uh i believe i don't remember who got in melee range with nathan i can't remember who and then we left off on leaving the forest and we were heading and we took wolf pelts as a mission too but our main mission is completed because we got that herb. Very, that very, herb. very shortened version of what happened last week. <laughs> I skipped over a couple of things, but alrighty. Um, there is the fact that um, you guys also saw some other ventures. You guys stopped by the little town to do some research on the way there. Um, whole bunch of cool, fun things. But you guys are leaving the Beastlands. And you are heading off to do whatever it is you guys want to do. Um, yeah. What time of day is it at this point? Um, if I remember correctly, it was evening time by the time you guys were leaving. So you guys will not be able to make it back to town before nightfall. You have to camp out in the wilds again. Or in the plains again. So... Okay, well, uh, if nothing else of significance happens, uh, Willark is going to want to talk to people at the campfire. Yep. So um, you guys will make it about, I think, if I remember math from last time, it was just before the halfway point. Um, you guys will be setting up camp. Um, Nathan is doing what he usually does, which is not sleeping at all. Um, and... Yeah, set campfire. Um, you guys are probably setting up for um, whatever you want to do. Um, how I'm going to rule uh, players who don't show up is they're just not talkative, not there, uh, but they are there. They just don't fight. They don't just want to interact. And if you ask them to do something, they more or less do it, like keeping watch and things like that. The uh, but they don't have it. <laughs> yeah. the, the funny thing is, with his subclass, they has a built in excuse because. One of his abilities is to hide inside his genie's vessel. Yeah. Um, he won't be using any abilities or powers, yeah. um, nor can you ask him to, because he's just not... He's there, but he's not there. It's just. Well, what I'm yeah. saying is, if his genie is a vessel, you can just say he got sucked in it and won't come out. Yeah, I don't want I don't mm. want to force him to use an ability where the next session he may want to use differently. So. I would say um, you could make the genie be an asshole and keep him in there. So. Um, but yeah, campfire. <laughs> yeah, so... As we're setting up there, I just say, I I feel like I need to uh, say something here. And um, first of all, you may have noticed I've been fairly irritable, and I I am sorry for that. Uh, I hope you don't judge my people on the whole for that. Most of them are better temperament than I am, more patient, more experienced um i will just say that i come from a tradition among my people where special things are supposed to happen we're supposed to have direct communion with the spirits of our ancestors and although i've seen for myself that it does happen it has yet to happen directly to me and i've been training with the bone dreamers for 40 years at this point so it's a little wearing i i've come to join the guild because i saw it as a potential sign of something to help me reach out to them the ancestors speak to us in ways that we don't necessarily understand and aren't always direct so but it still has yet to happen. Sometimes I think I've seen them in dreams, but that could just be wishful thinking on my part. So as long as I am in this guild, I will I'll stand with you a lot. I'll help you out as need be. Just I just hope 
you don't take my ill temper too personally because it is not personally motivated. No worries, big fella. I I was a uh, I was in a battalion with a ton of rough folk, so I'm no stranger to the to the quick to anger type. <laughs> quick to anger type. We bone dreamers are <laughs> we're trained to become quicker to anger than normal. It's a way of opening ourselves up to the spirits. So let me get this straight: you guys willingly get possessed? Not possessed, um, more like form a connection. Um, uh, how do I put it? So wait, you I been, suppose you've been training to talk to dead people. That is part of it. Um, Show me I how. suppose you could think of it as sort of spiritual irrigation. And it's like, and Dusty's just like trying to correlate between plants and dead things, and just thinks Glorick's talking about the circle of life. <laughs> it's like, we, the Bone Dreamers, we have potential for growth and power and communion with the dead. I mean, we're called Bone Dreamers because typically, every once in a while, somebody among us will walk in their sleep and wake up among the bones of our ancestors who died after living out their natural lives and you know as i said when we die after living a natural life and things go there as they should when we get older we learn to well we just have this instinct to go out to an area lie down and then we die those of us who are left behind, we recognize that this has happened. We hold a small memorial service and then just leave the body to be rejoined with the natural world. Uh, but sometimes there are those of us who wake up next to long dead remains, so long dead that there are bones left. Uh, hence the name Bone Dreamers. We're thought to have a special connection with the dead as a result of that, that we were pulled there in our sleep by the spirits trying to reach out to us. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So can you only speak to your ancestors, or are you able to speak to other dead? It's... I haven't been able to speak to them directly yet, but it's it's our ancestors. We are... Like I said, I've seen the abilities of my seniors, my elders in the uh, in the Bone Dreamers, and there is... It's every spirit that I've seen as a result of them displaying their capabilities, they've all been of my people. Hmm. The temper I've been known to have one myself. As well. That's to be expected among the small folk. I'm just saying that it's not to be expected of my folk, and I am a poor example of my folk. Hmm. Okay. Do you think you well, need more example us. of your folk? Is why you can't talk to the dead? I don't know why. My my master has told me that, you know, they'll speak to me when I'm truly opened up to them. When I truly understand, when I truly <clears throat> figure out how to let go. I'm not entirely sure what he means by that. I don't think he's entirely sure what he means by that. But... Maybe, maybe there is like a spiritual part you need to like uh, accomplish. Have you woken up next to bones yet? Oh, I woke up next to bones. That's how they started training me in the first place. That's how bone dreamers are chosen. Did you we are found. Any? 
No, but it's customary to uh, take a piece of the skeleton, and I hold up the amulet I wear. This a piece of the bones we wake up next to, and fashion a token from them. Maybe you need you know, to make part of the dead part of you to feel open to them. Maybe you should eat the next bones you find. No. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Remember how I felt about bodies being stolen? Oh. You're you're treading into <sighs> dangerous territory when it comes to being offensive here. All right. Okay. I will put that down on the list. Sorry. There's some people who there are some cultures that richly eat their dead as a form of closeness. I don't even eat meat. Insect. Most of those are insects, I believe, Dusty. Mm-hmm. No, a few of them are meaty people with languages. They consider it a waste form because they were in uh, areas where there was very low food supplies. So they considered it uh, a great honor to be able to supply their young with food, even though it was their own corpse. Um, I, I, took my, th- I took my trunk inside my clothes as you're saying this, as if to hide it from a bad smell. <laughs> uh, I will place my hand briefly on um, Guruk's uh, shoulder and just say I understand the difficulty of waiting and harnessing power. It took me quite a long time with my mentor before I could use fire in a non-destructive way that I wanted to. And for once... I understand, and it's a difficult journey, and I wish you best on it. Much appreciated. Well, I suppose I should get ready for my watch, then. I can take a watch with Glyric. Mm. Okay. Can right, we stop to... in, um... One of these forests on the way? Like, white forests? Well, you had to do um, your camping for the night. Um, yeah. Where you go tomorrow is up to you. Did I mm-hmm. make, find any other interesting herbs while we were still in the forest, or were we pretty rushed to get out? Um, it, 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 no, you didn't find anything else. Um, I didn't think so. It was a mixture of, you know, yes, you are rushed, um, but also, like... Um, what do I want to say? Any herbs you you thought would be interesting were in the territories of the beasts. Mm, yeah. So, I do have uh, a half a brain cell that would not have allowed me to do that. Right, then. exactly. <laughs> wisdom. I do have the wisdoms. Well, it's good to have wisdom. It's good to be wise. All right. Wisdom. My wisdom and intelligence scores are both 12, the highest of any barbarian ever. <laughs> While we're on watch, um, I would like to ask Wilric, um, what was it exactly that your mentor said to you was holding you back? He never said it in terms of it holding me back, just, just in terms of something that hasn't happened yet. That's And, it's some, and if it is something that's holding me back, it's something that holds back all Bone Dreamers to some point or another, and that is that, like I said, my my people aren't disposed towards anger. We're not easily shaken. Bone Dreamers, we are trained to fly into a rage on command because we do still have such instincts. They're just harder to get to. Usually, we don't... My people don't display that kind of rage or anger unless somebody we care about is threatened. Like, most frequently outside of Bone Dreamers, you'll see it among uh, mothers whose young children get threatened by wild animals. Uh, Beyond that, though, it's not typically something we tap into. It can be... It's something we have to reach deep for. Fear for me. You do not meet many of my kind that were afraid of fire. But I was. That... That would be like if I were afraid of my trunk. How? Long story, really. Um, 
This is why my mentor took me under their wing, actually. They wanted to teach me not to be afraid of it. Teach me that fire isn't a tool of destruction, but a tool of rebirth. How did you live your life if you were afraid of fire? You are fire. Oh, well, partially at least. Well, the same way anyone who doesn't want to see their face does. Don't look in a mirror and avoid the thing you're afraid of. You're very confusing. <laughs> Perhaps. That's why I turned to Druidry. And he'll kind of like light a small flame and just like play with the flames of the fire, making them into different shapes and whatnot, and just kind of uh, say, Fire is complicated too. I think that's why I relate to it. I shake my head slowly and just I mumble in Terran, you make you make no sense. I will not understand that and assume that you're muttering something about me. In, in case it's not clear, Terran is a dialect of Primordial, so if you speak that, you would understand. Oh, I do speak Primordial. Do okay. you speak Primordial so do or do you speak the <laughs> fire version of Primordial? Yeah, it's kind of like... Speak... You could say it's the difference between American English and Australian English. Cool. I didn't know that. That's Yeah, I do speak Primordial, so... that The base language, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Sweet. And if, the, if, like... If... Yeah. If you're if you're fire inclined, I believe that's called Ignan. Well, I think she just I has just the language itself. So yeah, ah, I okay. just picked it as my my because you speak common plus one language, mm. so I think primordial. Good good choice good choice. Figured it was on theme. Um, I will mutter back in. Um, you said Ignis. Ignan, whatever. I don't know the official name for it. Ignan's the a fire one. Um, Terran is the one he's spoken specifically. Well, I will mutter back in Ignan. Like I said, neither does fire. I'm not surprised at the fact that you respond as such, but I do seem a little like, like, oh, so that's how you say that. <laughs> that's my expression. Because again, <laughs> different dialect. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't think there's anything else Phoenix was going to talk about during the watch. Probably just yeah. let things go by playing with fire. Uh, you two want to give me perception checks? Yes, uh, I yes, can do that. Sure. Is this one I can do with smell? Uh, it's going to be sight-based, though. So. Okay. Just making sure. You are keeping watch, though. So. Yeah. I suppose smell would only be a factor mm -hmm. if there was a strong wind. Mm hmm What do you do? Um, Phoenix, uh, while it, it, you're the first watch, the sun, it, you know, the last remains of, of light from the sunset are dipping down below um, the horizon of the facet. Um, and as you are looking out and you're talking to your, your, your new friend here, your, your, your comrade, um, you would see against the sky, uh, stars, um, a shadow go from the village toward the beastlands. Can I make out what that shadow is? Um, it is... No bigger than Gwil Gwilric. Does it have wings? Uh, no, no wings. It's it's humanoid in shape, and it goes across the sky, um, past you guys toward the Beastlands. Is there any chance I've seen anything like this or under know what it might be? Um. How, how do I say this? Um, your imagine. I'll let you decide what you think it is. Your character think it is. How about that? So, <laughs> if he thinks it's a creature, it's a creature. If it thinks it's a weird magical phenomenon, it's that. I'll let you you you, you yourself think what it is. Uh, all like I said, all you see is a humanoid shape go across the sky. Uh, the only reason you see it is because the stars kind of twinkle out for a moment as it moves across the night sky uh, toward the Beastlands. Flicker the fire into like a hand shape and kind of give it a like a salute wave. <laughs> it, it 
doesn't seem to respond, it notice you or anything like that. It just moves toward out of, and it gets too far away for you to even see it, even against the night sky. So, um, who would be taking second watch? I guess I will. Um, if it's night, uh, don't count on me. So. Yeah, you've got the morning watch. Yeah. Um, um, Daniel will fill in wherever he needs to. Yeah. But he's the Probably he's Daniel. the elf. He's the one who could do the four hours. Yeah. So. And that, um, doesn't he have dark vision too? Or he no? does have dark vision yes. up to sixty feet. So. You guys want him to take second watch with you guys? He's not gonna make any rolls, but he will be there in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so Dusty, go ahead and give me a perception check. Okay. All right. Um, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, but during the night, um, you do hear, like you did the previous time you stayed out, out in the wilds, um, roars and other animalistic sounds coming from the beast lands. Um. Big kitties. Yeah. You can't, you can't identify what kind of noise it is, just that. You do hear noises coming from there. Um, and then... Um, Caius and Charles, you two are the final watch. <laughs> Always watch the, the sunrise. To you again. <laughs> All right. Uh, Charles with a 19, um, and Caius with 13. Um, neither of you see anything out of the ordinary. You both would hear the roars and stuff just like, uh, Dusty did. Um, and, and Charles, you would notice that, um, Nathan isn't really asleep either the entire night. <laughs> he's, he's like resting, but he's not asleep. So mm. his eyes, you know, he's, he's his eyes are closed as far as you can tell, but like every now and then you see him like open an eye, kind of look around, you know, suspiciously. Maybe, maybe look at the fire for a few moments and then close his eyes. So. Sleep with one eye open. Uh, <laughs> so, and that is the night. It is morning. You guys are free to do as you wish. Where do we like to go next? Are we going to go back to the Beastlands? Are we going to go to the Emerald Tribe area? Go back to the town? Go to the forest? Go back to Convergence? Where are we going? Well, we could turn in the quest today if we let it make a lot of things. Or we could go visit the Druid at the Emerald Tree, and I think uh, Fennec wanted to do that. It is improper to enter a Druid's ground without invitation. I do want to speak with the druid of the village again, if possible, though. And if we're, and if we aim to hunt wolves, says. Are you talking to smooth as shonen. Are you mean, you mean smooth as silk? No, not smooth as silk. Yeah. He's definitely not a druid. Because I thought he was uh, a ranger. <laughs> no, there's um, I'm scrolling up through the things trying to find the Yeah, name. I was told that there was a druid, a representative of the Emerald Tribe in that village. In Oakfell or Snawbell? Yes, Lulabell. Yeah, Lulabell. And... Lulabell. Yeah. yeah, didn't meet that druid, but uh. Well, we can check if Lulabell is there. Yes. And, and while uh, we're it's... there, ask about where to find wolves. Un Unless somebody already found that out. We kind of scattered while we were in that village. I, uh, I do have a map mm -hmm. that tells me uh, where where I think wolves are. Oh, well. In the Smallville okay. forest had wolves. Yeah. Okay, we could... Yeah, we can. Eat. Once we are there, we can have to go to the uh, Smallville yeah. forest. Go to the village, check in with uh, the druid there, and... Uh... Go to the we'll, hunt. we'll probably see that dick again. Yeah, it would name? probably take us one day. Mm. If we really need to hunt wolves, I it seems inhumane to hunt them just for their pelts when they've not bothered us. I, I mean, I'm inclined to agree, but again, I'll. If it's what this group decides to do to increase our standing, <clears throat> so be it. Well, I, it's an open quest, so we don't totally have to keep doing it. So if we run into wolves we'll, and they attack us, 
It's just a bonus for defending ourselves. We don't have to actually yes. go and hunt them. That's that's how I'm inclined mm. to approach it personally. Um, so. Nathan was stepping to clarify like... for the mission. Um, it's not always wolves. It's wild animals that are overpopulating areas. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. So that 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 makes Fenix uh, more inclined to it mm -hmm. because he's very nature yep. sensitive. I would say like two months ago it was bears. A few months before that it was um, uh, snakes. Uh, you know, he, it rotates out uh, based off population control. So. Oh, okay, that makes mm -hmm. all right. Then that's a little puts my mind a bit more. He, at he's as like, well. he, uh, you gotta remember, uh, facets are basically mini biomes um mm. they, there's no outside influence outside of uh what happens inside of it and in adventures so predators multiply too easily mm -hmm, exactly so yes yeah all right that... i think we're heading back to the village then all right you guys head on back um takes you a little less than half a day you guys are there like just before lunchtime um you can see like people are just now going for like a like a, a brunch late brunch early lunchtime if if you know people are food here break um, out the mimosas exactly hey yo i love mimosas um <laughs> so what do you guys like to do you want to Stay here for the rest of the day and, and sleep in an actual building. Um, do you guys want to keep on moving forward? What are you, what are you guys doing? Fennec wants to chat with Lula Bell if possible, though he's aware she might not be here since it's midday. And, yeah, she is not here. So yeah, uh, a few, a few, there are a few people who are kind of like looking at you as if like you're ghost because you did go out to the Beastlands and came back alive. <laughs> um, just want to throw that out there. It's like so. Okay, ghosts. Why are we ghosts? Why are people avoiding us? Are we that scary? Not avoiding I, you, but giving you weird looks. Like, in, yeah. In a moment I, of cheekiness, I wave at some of them with my trunk. <laughs> some of them are like, wave back, but like, they're so confused. Um, but yeah. So. Well, in that case, if we want to take a look at the Snellville Forest while we're here, I'm happy Is that to where do you're... so. Is that where the map says that wolves may be found? Uh, yes, Snellville Forest and Sunrise Forest are the two forests that will have wolves. Um, but you will also know Snellville Forest is currently where they are doing timber cutting as well. Uh, that's mm. where, if that's where Those wolves loggers. pose a greater threat, you know. Yeah, we can protect the we can protect the innocents while they just do their job. Yeah, we'd have to look. We'd have to look for them a bit away from where the timber work is being done because wolves would be inclined, I'm guessing, to keep their distance if possible, but could be pushed to attack if it's not. Mm -hmm. Depending on how territorial the wolves are, they could have migrated to the Sunrise Forest, but... Perhaps the workers mm. would know where the wolves are coming from because they've been working the forest. We, we could ask... ask we could ask here in town while well, some of them are, are... Are there any timber workers? Uh... They're already out for the day. Okay, so none of them have, like, come back. Okay, yeah. No, yeah. Um, yeah, you, you would know the last time you came here, it was evening time, like, almost supper when they were coming back. Okay, okay yeah. So, so. Wait, well, thought... if we make our way... If we make our way out to the forest, we can probably catch them while they're at work or when they start making their way back for the evening. Either way, we can ask them if they've heard or seen any signs of wolves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you All and right. Fenix were super nature-oriented. Wouldn't you be against helping loggers? It's... <sighs> trees... Wood is necessary for some things, and... I would... I think that on these facets, uh, the limitations of nature are more evident than ever. So, I would hope that these loggers would know how to limit their production so what would happen if we went there and saw them over logging i would shake my head disapprovingly because they are they would be killing this facet but only this facet all right mm. dusty what were you, to... what'd you say dusty i said all right 
I was saying, like, I was asking Fennec and Gil Willerick, like, wait, I know you guys are super nature-oriented. Why are you supporting loggers? Don't people who are nature-oriented hate loggers? So it, it's common knowledge that you, you gotta remember these, these facets are pretty controlled when it comes to resources like trees, mining, things like that, because it is a finite <sighs> resource being the size they are. Is there areas where deforestation has occurred? Absolutely. Um, but it's it's safe to assume your average place is going to be heavily uh, maintained. Okay. If it's yeah. legal. If it's illegal, then yeah, that's different. <laughs> I was just trying to give character challenging dialogue. No, it's good. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I mean, that's still correct. Um, yeah. You probably still, still ask the same question. I'm just giving some more context to the world, yeah. world building it? and stuff. Yeah. And like I said, these these facets are very small compared to the world we live in. The damage of taking too many resources would be much more clearly evident. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, then tomorrow we'll go and find the wolves. You guys want to rest here for the mm -hmm. night? Because I will say, if you do go out. You will be spending the night in the forest after okay. if you do find wolves or not. So, so I don't, uh, I don't, and Lulu I don't is not supposed to be here till tomorrow. Uh, she's not here t right now. Who knows when she will show up? Okay, do we know where she lives? I know where she lives. Okay, should we wait for her? She likely is out foraging in some way. Well, she won't asking, be back till yeah, late. Should we like camp at her house or something? No, and that's, when off, we do, that's awfully presumptuous. And when we do speak with her, it'd be best if it were not all of us. She's yeah. one for less people than more. So, okay. do we want to take a rest in this town, or do we want to go straight to the forest? But we still got a good amount of daylight. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I think we yeah. can make it to the forest. We, we can. Make it we can go to the forest and be back uh, before the uh, night. So. All right. So if no one's opposed, shall off, we head to the yeah. forest? Off to the forest we go! Yeah. Hold on one moment. Ben is messaging me. Ah. Oh. Perfect. Ben is German. He's alive. <laughs> Required He's a new alive. Problem. He gets us cheap ins. He is joining right now, so give him just a moment. What happened? Um, you guys... Uh, he didn't say. He just said, sorry, I am here now. So. Yeah. Not much has happened. I mean, we got some backstory from Gilwork. Yep. Ben, hello. Hi, sorry. Hello. Well, Gilwork glad you can make it. You haven't missed much. Um, Thank God. You guys, uh, like uh, last week, left Beast Lance alive. Um, you... Were traumatically influenced because you got your life saved by Nathan uh, from the the pincer bug and had been in a stupor for the past day. Um, <laughs> but you're fine now, <laughs> magically, as if you know. That's how it works in real life when you have a traumatic event. You just get over it. Um, <laughs> yeah, PTSD isn't a thing. What are you? Yeah, yeah about? it's, it's psh, psh. <laughs> so. Um, the party has decided to go into the forest to go hunt for wolves. Snallvale Forest, not the Beastlands, you know. That would be a bad <laughs> idea. Okay. Oh, there's wolves there, just not normal wolves. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... I need yeah. to get yeah. more, die, well, It's just like a regular wolf, <laughs> only die. I think they don't, will not forgive us more if we bring them, you know, dire wolf spells. <laughs> I mean, the... Did the board specify if dire wolves would be... It's, it just I mean, they would say we ask for wolf pet. This is a Ooh. werewolf. So it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't count. It's, only, it's technically only half a wolf, so we need five gold pieces for the <laughs> And and we gotta take that back because you know now we have to penalize you for skinning a human because it's half human. Yes, oh, <laughs> you get two gold. <laughs> but you only get no, half. No, that's not mean. That just means you sell it somewhere else. <sighs> All right, what's well, in the forest? Okay. Get those Nazi skin lamps. Um, Since we're so not going to stalk Lulabelle, let's go to the forest. All right, so you guys are going to straight to the forest. Okay, cool. Um, 
it's a little bit different walking to this forest as it is not filled with the horrible sounds of beasts and monsters and uh, things that could easily kill you uh, if you're not too careful. Um, you do see um, the occasional stump from one of these trees. Uh, and these trees are uh, very tall and not too round. Um, um, Wilwork can almost put his hands around it. You know, there's, a little, there's about, you know, half a foot of space between his hands as he reaches around. So we're um, talking like birch trees? Li- li- no, birch trees are very small. They're, they're, they're about like eight big around. Um, more like in the realm of oaks. Um, taller, or maybe some pi- some type of pine than that. Okay, I'm not too much for a tree guy. Sorry. <laughs> pine would be more along the lines of what you're thinking. I'm, I'm okay. no arborist either, but you know, yeah. I, um, the house I do... grew up in has pines and an oak tree, so I know there the difference. Go. Cool. Um, right. So like you do see the occasional stumps, so you can see the um pines of forestry happening. And as you're entering the forest, you do hear the echoing shouts of. Tim! And the crashing sound of trees. The thundering boom of a tree falling. No no howls of wolves, though. None of that. Yeah. Hmm. All right. We need to ask the walkers if uh, they know where wolf may be. Yes. I agree. You guys have the floor. What would you like to do? Uh, let's follow the noise like the... to the to the workers. Let's go talk to these workers. Um, Phoenix is um going to keep an eye out for any signs or um tracks of wolves. Already, give me a survival check. We. Hey. Hmm. Nice. Um, you would see, um, game trails, but they all seem to be on the older side. Um, at, at the new, the most recent ones being several days old. Um, it seems all wildlife because of the deforestation or the, 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 um, logging has scared away most animals. From what you could tell. Yeah, I'll keep it, just keep an eye out as we're traveling. Yeah. Um, Phoenix is inclined to go with the opposite direction of the the sounds, yeah. but if if others are going that way to ask questions, he'll follow. Yeah. So um, you guys are walking toward uh, the loggers. Um, as you get closer, you can see more and more evident signs of a logging camp. Um, you see giant blades. You see a sawmill. You see a whole bunch of very muscular people um working away either chopping wood sawing wood or uh with the most recent tree that fell down uh d um branching it you see there's any... about eight people here are any of them wearing high heel suspendies in a bra uh no no what <laughs> lumberjack song come on man uh, sorry i wouldn't know um so yeah and the egg will work um these all look like the same people you you Encounter that one time, so. Hmm. A few of them like are looking at you guys as you're approaching them. Um, one of them stops working. Uh, the same half orc you talked to last time, uh, Gwilwork. And he's you know drenched in sweat, and he has his axe like just kind of like hanging over his shoulder, big giant double bladed axe. Um, and he's like ah. Uh, Hello? Uh, hello, good to see you again. Uh, we're on the hunt for wolves, and we understand there, there might be some in this forest. Ah, yes, yes. They've been a problem lately, hunting everything out in this forest. That, anything that we haven't scared away yet, anyways. Um, let's see here. Uh, he's looking over his shoulder, he's looking at everyone, and he points to one of the uh, humans, and he's like, he's like, Billy, get over here! Billy scurries over. He's like, Billy's been attacked by a wolf a couple days ago. Billy, where were you at again? You were out scouting for um us for the next area, right? And Billy nods. He's like, yes. Uh, we were planning on moving further south, and a uh, well, small little pack of three of them startled me, and I got away. They weren't really chasing me very far. Uh, 
luckily. So, you know. Do you think you could uh, lead us to that place again? So we could search from there? Uh, I mean, rather not. <laughs> I don't want to attack the wolves again, you know what I mean? Uh, well, but it's, well, we'll protect you. I mean, it's, it's only just, you know, an hour, maybe two hours south of here. Um, you'll, you'll, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to find them in, in that direction somewhere, he says. <laughs> Very <laughs> much evident does not want to go back toward the wolves. <laughs> we don't need to tear you from your work. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 you know, we got, I got work to do and stuff, you know, I don't think boss here let me go, yeah, you know. Fenix gives him an easy out. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's just mouthing the words, thank you. Are you scared, sir? I don't know, uh, we can yeah. go talk to, you, we can ask your boss, you know, to lead us there, it will even be a great service to, uh, to everyone here, you know. Well, your friend just said, you know, you don't, just don't need me or anything like that, mm-hmm. you, know, you, know, you know, you don't need me, you know. All right, let's head out without the... Billy. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I love your kitty. So you guys are going to head on in the direction that he gave you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So now, uh, easy to see which way is south. It's daytime. Sun's up in the sky. Sun sets in the west. And it is is starting to get in the realm of setting. Um, It is just before. it's, It's supper time right now. So you guys are hungry, but you're also hungry for some wolf blood, apparently. So... Also, if it's if it's uh, sunset time, then uh, that means that we're more likely to encounter wolves. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> same here, Andy. Um, so, as you guys are heading through the forest south, um, who here is going to be looking for wolves, and who's here looking for something else or doing something else? I will be smelling for wolves. Yeah. So you can go ahead and give me that perception check with advantage there. Uh, Phoenix, you already got your 20, so you get on there. Um, if you're tracking, give me yeah. a survival check. If you're doing something else, tell me what you're doing, and I'll tell you what to roll. I'm just vibing. No, Phoenix is continuing tracking. Cool. Yeah, so with your powers combined, uh, it does not take you long to find what can easily be seen as the area of where wolves have been recently. Um, You see uh, the bones of small animals. Um, You can see uh, spots where recent scuffles between animals have happened. Um, Nothing like the Beastlands. (laughs) These are very much smaller uh, marks and maybe some dried blood in the area. Um, And you would eventually come across a nice little area. Yeah. Um, you guys go ahead and align yourselves in this box in like whatever marching order you would be in. Okay, so uh, we discussed strategy last session. I don't believe so. Uh, yes, if we won, uh, charge. <laughs> <laughs> Should I be in the front? No, but Phoenix was tracking, so he was probably you don't have to track uh, in the front. Probably would be middle. So. I mean, if you're tracking, then yeah, you would be up front. And I would be covering you because I would be keeping my nose out and all that. Mm. Yeah. And sorry if I suddenly get louder at times. This kitty likes to mess with my mic. Yeah. <laughs> Love him. Um. Hold on one second. No one roll anything yet. Let me. Are those shadows like trees? Oh, that's yes. So cool. Yeah, there's the trees, the, the, the trunks of trees and stuff. Um, go ahead and go ahead and roll initiative while I explain to you uh, what you guys eventually happen upon. Um, Nathan's going to be over to the side. He's not really helping you guys out. He, he seems fairly confident you guys can handle wolves. Um, <laughs> um, if it's only wolves. But you guys <laughs> do hear the sounds of uh, a high-pitched squeal be suddenly cut off. Like a human-sounding squeal? <laughs> Uh, more animalistic, for sure. Mm. Hunting. Can be a rabbit. They can make very high uh, screams. Can I identify the squeal, just just, just for flavor-wise? Uh, give me just a general nature check. I can make do nature. Nature. Check. nature. It's 19. Oh, with the 19, it's maybe a raccoon? Maybe a possum, something along those lines. 
Um, and then I will do a roll for the wolves. Um, well, actually, no, I won't roll for the wolves just yet because uh, they are not in combat. They don't know uh, you guys are there. Um, combat has not started just yet, um, but what you see is what you see on the map. So um, we're going to go Dusty. in turn order, but we're not going to go in combat turn order. Uh, Dusty, what's your dex? Because, you know, I put in my tiebreaker and you didn't. Oh, uh, mine's uh, two, 14. Okay, yeah, then you you would be before me in the turn order. I didn't. Uh, I guess the tiebreaker thing for that. Sorry. Yep. It's all good. I can fix it real quick. There you go. Uh, so Dusty, you have your your first, but it's, you're not in combat yet. So just kind of like what you would be doing as you guys are walking through the forest, um, and you would hear that high pitched squeal coming from the north, uh, from the the northwest. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So what you see is what you see. It's your turn. What would you like to do? Uh, let me check something real quick. Oh, uh, well, I'm 80 feet away from them. So I'm going to shoot my short bow. You're not going to say anything to your group or anything? Wolves. <laughs> and you're going to say wolves and just shoot. Yeah, wolves. I'm going to shoot them. Okay. Is that okay with you guys? I'm closer. It's on you. It's not on us. <laughs> They might like, scatter. Well, uh, do you want to be a shooter or not? It's your turn. <laughs> yeah, it's your turn. You do what you want. Uh, I was asking for an opinion. Yeah, you guys, you're not in combat right now. Yeah, I uh, would. Would I know whether or not they would scatter or attack upon getting? Aggressed. Um, give me a nature check. Does my 19 not tr- travel over? Oh, your 19 was to identify a squeal of an animal. Nature. That's okay. I did another yeah. good nature. Uh, so with wolves, um, it depends, right? Um, they're very territorial. Wolves are. So if you're in their territory or you're, you know, upon their area, they definitely will fight back. Um, they are. They do fight more or less. Not really to the death, but they will they won't just scatter unless they absolutely feel like you outpower them. Um so it, it's it's yeah. kinda you're leaning more toward the they probably won't scatter away if you attack them while they're eating. More of they would definitely see six brand new meals. Okay, so the big elephant man. So if we're not worried about them scattering, I'll give Dusty a nod that uh he can shoot. Shooting time, fifteen. Cool. Uh, fifteen should hit. Let me I'm aiming for this one. Uh, stats. Which one's I'm this aiming one? for this one. Uh, the fight one there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, that hits. Cool. Roll for damage. Oh, I here, did. Here. Cool. Yeah. Eight damage. Um. Yep. Yeah. So we're gonna officially be in combat now. Uh, yeah. let me go ahead and add them to the turn order. Uh, you would have surprise on them. So that is your turn, Gwilric. They are surprised. They did not expect uh, to be attacked out of the blue like this. Um, and you see an arrow poking out the gut side of the wolf he just hit and give a sharp yelp and growls as the other wolves turn towards you all, um, caught off guard. Their maws uh, all bloody from eating whatever they were just eating. Uh, is anywhere... I see, like, a fallen yeah, tree. The fallen tree will that. be difficult terrain, but outside of that, that'll be the only thing. Okay, so if that's difficult terrain, then that would mean that I could probably move to about here. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move and dash over there. Got it. Uh, not going to rage yet, because the wolves seem to be caught off guard. So, mm-hmm. But I am going to make myself clear to them. Uh, it's the wolves' turn. They have gathered their bearing. They are wolves. They are quick to adapt to a quick and sudden fight. Um, so they are no longer surprised, but they can't do anything. So uh, it yeah. is Phoenix's turn. Um, Phoenix is going to move my full speed just to kind of stay close so I can help the party members that are moving up, need be. 
because range is a thing. Um, and I'm going to use my action to summon Wildfire Spirit using my wild shape. Um, as he kind of like lights his hands on fire and then you see kind of like jumping out of the fire a small little fennec fox. <laughs> and I, I... love him. Oh, fennec <laughs> uh, Yeah, exactly. Um, and he will jump out to 30 feet ahead. I didn't make a token for him yet. You Which know, I'm working on something real quick to use temporarily because I, honestly, I I heard I heard you talking about it earlier, and I'm just like, Herpeter, uh, where is he going to appear at? Um, here I'll grab it. I'll grab an image. I don't know. I got. I got. Just uh, okay. up, 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 right there on the map. Let me give you control over it. There you go. He, you have control he, over that little he, thing right here. Boop. Yeah, I love him. He's going to appear about here as he jumps out of the flames. Um, and then that's my action, I believe. So let's see. Um, I'm not going to summon it that far because then Gwilrick would have to make a deck save. I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, please don't make me do have to take a deck save. So he will appear about here, so that you're not within the radius of it. That's not- you're- is, is Wilrick within a 10-foot radius of that? I can move him no, here. No, uh, that's, that's 15 feet right there. Okay. Um, right there is- I'm within 10 feet of it, uh, so, yeah. Yes, that is 10 feet right there, yeah. There. Yeah, now he's that beautiful. Was yep. All right. Um... And so it takes its action after me. Okay. Um, and then I will use my bonus action to command hunt. Um, mm -hmm. And that is my Fenix's turn. I haven't named this creature yet. Do you guys like Ifrit? Um, or do you like Abas? Or do you like... Flint best for it. I'm well, Ifrit is a specific race in uh, D and D. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah, Ifrits are fire genies, and they're generally that's evil. Technically, so that's maybe don't. Work... I just do a lot. Of, I just know a lot of mythology, so I was like, Ifrits is cute because it's a little fire spirit. But uh, I guess in D and D, it's evil. What about Ag What about Agni? We Agni? can figure out that later. Yeah. Well, anyways. Um, his movement is 30 feet running and 30 feet uh, hover. So he's going to just neum run 30 feet and then run right into the center-ish area here. Foxy mix mix fox face. <laughs> Foxy mix fox face. Um, and then his attacks. Oh, come on, where's the setting description? Oh, right, that's that. Sorry, I'm still figuring this out. You're good. Give me plenty of time to um, give it a real token. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cute. Um, uh, Google. So the range thing is only one time. Cool. Okay, um, then it's just going to move up to this one, mm -hmm. um, and it will make a flame seed attack. Beautiful. I believe that is a ranged attack, so you have it at disadvantage. Is it a ranged attack? Mm-hmm. I'm like 90% wow, sure. Wow, I'm learning. Yeah. So disadvantage is going to be a 10. Uh, a 10 will miss. I accidentally rolled damage, because I always think that that button is to roll that's perfectly Wait, fine. It's a D twenty damage? Oh, that's to hit. Yeah. yeah. Um uh, it is a range of attack flame seed, yes. Um cool. So a ten uh, that is your turn, I believe, right? Did a ten not hit, I assume? A ten did not hit, no. Okay. Then it's just going to um stay there and end my turn. Yep. Okay. Gaius. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move right here, and then already my uh, trident to be thrown 
uh, at any wolf that gets within 20 feet of me. Oh, sounds good. Daniel. I'll move just a little bit more ahead. And... Is there anything obstructing my arrow? Or... Like, uh, hold if on. there's no shadow, that means there's no cover, essentially? Correct, yes. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna take a shot. At the damaged one right there? Go for it. Yeah. A 22 definitely hits. Yeah. You let loose your, your arrow, enhanced by your... Uh, warlock powers and it just pierces through it or not it's bludgeoning damage so like it just cracks the ribs and like caves in its chest a little bit and it falls to the ground and that will end my turn all right earls okay so charles will first go here first if it's then use uh, his, uh, what's it called? Uh, cunning action to dash. Nice. But he extra fits. So that would be here. That way. And uh, shoot the wolf in front of him. Fortunately, nine will miss. Yeah. But I'm in range now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, dusty. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, scoot you over here. Get behind the log. Take another shot. I'm gonna take a shot at the this one right here. Copy. Okay. Fourteen. A fourteen does hit and deals Ooh. four piercing damage. Okay, and then I am going to. Uh Okay, uh that's the that's the fire spirit, my bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gold border is friendly. Yeah. Okay, Gwilrick. I'm gonna say Gwilrick. Go get the it's like go make them bones! Then you might get a bit closer to your spirits and I'll give them inspiration. Nice. <laughs> um so, yeah, that's your turn. Gwilark, it is your turn. You are inspired to go make more bones. <laughs> I will get better at that at some point. Okay. <laughs> I rage. I, I can't do it. It took me a <laughs> I, yeah, you I rage. played trumpet when I was a kid. I was much better at it back hey, then. I played saxophone. I didn't do that shit. <laughs> um, yeah, just, yeah, but you, you rage until you're... Is that the sound you're trying to make? That was closer. Like this? I didn't even hear it. <laughs> Your mic didn't. <laughs> was that yeah, we, can't hear it. we can't hear it. Oh, oh. God damn it. I, I'm pushing my mic as far away as I can. <laughs> no. Nope. I can't do it anymore. No, it's, uh, it's fine. Just uh, go ahead <laughs> yeah, to your turn. Okay, okay yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm raging. I run up so that I'm within reach rage. Mm -hmm. And I will attack that wolf that's Damaged. yeah, this one right here. Got it. Go for it. Um, do, 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 do. Um, I don't know why my glaive is showing up twice in my attack list and all my other things. Whatever. I don't know. I'll have to the fix nine that. Will miss. Yeah, of course I will. Yeah. So. <laughs> the wolves able to dodge attacks left and right except for that one that got hit by the bow um so these are delicious little fox ready to be munched upon <laughs> so uh this one's gonna go first um and give it a bite uh hold on one second here let me uh, uh change the settings mine um don't auto roll whisper toggle banners toggle cool. uh we're going to go munch on it. 
Uh, it misses with a critical fail. Um, the damaged wolf is also going to try to eat it, and now has advantage because of pack tactics and flanking. Um, I believe a twenty does hit yeah. the cool and five piercing damage, and he's make it strength safe for me. It is Im- immune to being knocked prone. Oh, okay. Well, then mm-hmm. it just takes the five piercing. So. And this last wolf is going to go for Gwilric, uh, because he is a prime target. Ooh, a 23 hits you, though. Yeah, it does. Figures. And uh, 7 piercing and a strength save, which I don't think you're going to have any problems with. Especially because I make that an advantage, because I'm raging. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You're fine. Get off my it leg, on your little leg. bastard. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. Seven piercing reduced to three because of the rage. That it is, yep. Um, Phoenix. Phoenix is going to move just a little bit closer. Probably kind of tuck himself under, kind of, kind of over here-ish. So, Actually, oh, no. line of sight changes. I'm going to move here. Line of sight is better here. <laughs> okay. How oh, far am I? Now I'm in a good range. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hurl, create a moat of fire, and hurl it into the center there, casting fairy fire. Ooh, it's Dex, right? I need um. Information. I would like to create a 20 foot cube to target the three wolves, and it will hit Ifrit. Or, I guess it's not Ifrit. Um, whatever my my uh, fox's name is going to be. Add black. Mm-hmm. I still think Soot or Ember. Right there is where you want it? Yeah. Cool. And until what can you, I save is it? Until you firmly decide a name, I'm going to call it Add Block. <laughs> um, so I need a dexterity saving throw from all of them. I will get my little wolfie. What's your DC? Uh, that is a great question. It is 12. Cool. Uh, so your fox saves. And then uh, wolf number one saves. Wolf number two saves. And wolf number three fails. Okay. Um, it lights up and kind of like this like glowing flame surrounding it. That's not damaging it. Mm-hmm. Um, More like a sparkly effect. Yeah, I, I flavor it as flames because fire. Yeah, that, that um, works. So it now sheds dim light and everyone has advantage. Um, what color is the light coming off of it? Uh, kind of like a reddish color. Reddish orange. It's not green light. flames? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it literally looks like it's kind of like surrounded by flames. Usually I would have it like each each creature lights up with a different color flame that gets targeted mm. by it. Nice. I like to think that's that just it's, the one. I like to think it's kind of a cartoony flame, you know, as a way of saying it's not actually on fire. <laughs> and for my <laughs> bonus action, I'm going to call out um and I will call out the unnamed wolf's name uh and then just say um pull back um Mm -hmm. and it is going to use its fiery teleportation ability Mm -hmm. um which i need to look up how exactly this works again because uh so it could teleport up to 15 feet away um every creature within five feet of it uh has got to make a deck save or it takes um 1d6 plus your uh proficiency bonus fire damage yeah that's what i thought so i'll be safe from it yeah. yeah. So there's the two wolves in the north and south of it, and um, unless you want to, you know, teleport one of them, and, and if they're willing, you can take it with them. <laughs> I think I'll not take the wolf with me. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, I'll go ahead and make those saves while. Actually, it's... you know what? Let, let's let's try it. Let's try just taking a wolf. Okay. It tries. Uh, unfortunately, the wolf is not a willing creature, so it won't work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they the, would... the fox as a um, enemy. So. Yeah. 
Okay, so did they make their saves? Not yet. I'm rolling it right now. Okay. Pass. Pass. Disgusting. So they take um, no they... damage. Tragic. Okay, and it will the... teleport mm -hmm. just over. 15 feet. Yeah. These are some nimble wolves. They are very nimble. <laughs> and these are minion versions. <laughs> they just roll really good. It'll teleport right here. Okay. Perfect. Um, and that will be my turn. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wook of Fire bursts out as it just magically teleports. Um, and the wolves are already on edge from the first burst of fire from the fairy fire <laughs> we're ready for this time apparently and dodge this uh weird flaming fox's fires uh with skill um caius already uh i'm gonna move my 30 feet over to here putting mm -hmm. me 20 feet from little fiery wolf over here so i'm gonna throw yep. my trident at it go with for advantage it. yeah you yes you do have advantage Ooh, try to try to. I'm gonna make sure I got the thrown version. Uh, 16 hits, three piercing damage. Very nice. Right. And uh, that'll be my turn. Beautiful. Uh, Daniel. Let's see how far can I get again. Yeah, that works. Okay. Move. Use my movement to get up to here. And I'm going to fire another arrow at the injured one once more. Hey, go ahead and shoot. Which one again? Uh, The one the that one? has damage, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you have an advantage, so you can roll again if you wish to. Oh, the oh, another right here. Okay. Uh, 11 still hits, so you're good. Sweet. Yeah, that one, once again, your enhanced uh, arrows just, once again, caves his chest in and just pff, crunching a sound of bones, and it just falls to the ground. And that'll end my turn again. Yeah. It's like you're firing. Uh, Daniel arrow. taking two um, kills. It, Charles. It's like you're firing Mjolnir oh. from your bow. Mm -hmm. oh, Charles oh, yeah. will take out his rapier, come next to this wall, and mm -hmm. try to give it a nice swing between have, sides. Yeah. 16 hits, and you do get stink attack damage, yeah. if I'm correct. Um, so I get a stink attack. Yeah. yeah. You have advantage. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. You just straight through its neck, you just... With the rapier and pull it out. <laughs> Just a clean stab and it is dead. Yeah. Don't don't damage the pelt. <laughs> Very yeah. important. It, it, it wasn't even aware you were there. It was super focused on Gwilrick. <laughs> uh, Dusty. All right. One wolf left. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to keep shooting it with bows. It's still within 80 feet. It. That's probably gonna miss. Uh, eight will miss, yes. I went wide. Oh well. Gwilrick, smack it harder! Oh yeah, that's right. You gave me inspiration. I haven't used it. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I was asking right. about the optional rule, because the optional rule does something with damage rolls. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna circle around behind this wolf and before mm -hmm. swinging at it with my glaive. Go for it. You don't even need the inspiration yeah, that at this hits. point. Yep. Oh, I shouldn't have rolled with advantage on that one, but whatever. Uh, yeah. You take the left one no matter what, so it's all good. Yep. Uh, oh, I really need to add things for when I'm raging for damage, but... Uh, so that's Plus nine two. slashing damage going at it. Okay. Yeah, nine slashing damage. You leave a good-sized gash along its side, but doesn't okay. quite kill it yet. Okay, DM, since we're here, the thing I was doing is a Tasha's thing. It allows your inspiration to be added to a damage roll or healing roll. 
But you can't uh, use it. No. Okay. So. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna use that optional rule for the class. Gotcha. So. Um. Yeah, is that your turn, Gulrik? Uh, yeah. It's the wolf's turn. Uh, wolf is damaged. Wolf is scared. His friends are gone, so he's going to run away. He's going to disengage and Damn run it. off into the woods. Uh, sixty. Um, moving exceedingly fast for a wolf. Um, Phoenix, it's your turn. You can s probably still see it running. <laughs> it does not want to fight anymore. It is damaged. It wants to run away. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to pull out my crossbow. Uh, and I'm going to take a shot at it. What kind of You're a natural twenty? <laughs> How do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. uh, I would just like to give a clean shot through the neck to make it an instant quick death. Yeah, and instant and clean it is. As the wolf just as it cuts through neck, it's like mid mid stride and just <laughs> to the side, um, <laughs> sliding all on the ground for a few feet. Uh, it's a trail of blood flowing out of it, uh, and combat is over, my friends. Can we take a quick washroom break? Or I might just step up for a second. Yeah, go for so, it. Fine. Someone knows how to uh, skin a wolf? I believe the druid who just oh, went to go do a uh, bio break. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Maybe the barbarian? Does barbarian know how? Uh, um, I'm not I'm not proficient in survival. I mean, so from my general background, you could say that maybe I've seen it done, but mm -hmm. it's not something I typically do. Mm -hmm. Phoenix would be willing to do that. I can make a quick survival check before I run out. Yeah, if, go for it. If DM will allow it, I will assist. Yeah, can I assist too? Uh, if you or, have the skill, you can assist. If you do not have the skill, you cannot do the help action. I'm, I'm right, proficient then. in survival. That's why. Okay. Then uh, I'll let, when uh, she comes back, uh, she can roll again for the advantage. So. Okay, thank you. Um, regardless, um, actually, you just go ahead and let me, you go ahead and roll for me, uh, Ben. Okay. Uh, just a straight roll? Uh, just click uh, survival. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there we go. Phoenix tries something different. Um, and you're like, why are you trying to be fancy? And you just clean, cl clean cuts, clean cuts, clean cuts. Uh, your time in the army. Um, it, it is, or sorry. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're Daniel. Sorry, I got that confused with Caius. Oh, you're all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you, you just are able to figure it out quite easily. Um, you never really done it before, but um, some weird instinct takes over and you're just able to through. So Think um, it, down. It's, it's not very fast uh, cleaning uh, and, and pelting wolves. It takes quite a long time to do so. Um, so meanwhile, Nathan is watching you guys all. Um, he gives a good thumbs up, good solid thumbs up of a good job for all of you. Good tactics, good good use of your abilities and things like that. Um, so yeah, he he gives a positive two thumbs up. The covenant two thumbs little, up. So I give him a little nod before I start keeping watch while they're dealing mm -hmm. with the skinning. Yeah, I'm gonna be sure to grab my uh my trident out of that one wolf. Smart, very smart that. to do. Um, luckily the. The quality of the of the pelts isn't heavily determined based off of this uh, mission. It's just bringing some sort of pelt in to prove you did kill a wolf. Um, so yeah, good job for that. Um, Can I ask the group um, if they think do you, do you think there be more wolves like a den perhaps in this area? It's possible for sure. I mean, only four wolves. It seems a little small for me. But... I'm I'm no expert on them, but if there is a den, it's probably not going to have as threatening wolves. There are probably just going to be pups there, as and perhaps another older one to keep watch over them. Mm. 
four doesn't seem unreasonable. Wolves typically travel in packs of four or five. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah. No more than ten. And that's like including the pups and everything. So mm. I would say that leaving the pups would be best. They do need to repopulate eventually. Yes. Right. They don't they don't pose a threat to anyone in the interim. Yeah. Also, pups are kind of adorable. I will say as I pick up my Firefox and just start <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, but it is the sun is setting. It is becoming nighttime. Uh, I'm assuming you guys are gonna set up camp in this general area somewhere. May as well. Bury um, the remains of the wolves first. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a way of not attracting other predators. Yeah. Um, so you guys <laughs> are... <laughs> any wolf pup. As you guys are sitting up camp, and before you all start oh, going to bed... Um, through the trees, a weird white light starts leaking through the branches. Gandalf? Is that the sun? <laughs> that can't be the sun. It is coming from the north. Mm. The sun is it, its setting. Like, you see the uh, purple and blue hues of light over you. Um, but this is a, a, a like a white light coming from the north. It could be ghosts. Can we go check it out? I mean, is this uh, Northern Lights? No, it is coming from like your eye level, almost not above, like through the trees and everything. I am holding my glaive at the ready, and uh, so can I make a try check to, look... to think if I know what this might be? Uh, yeah, give me give me a what kind of check you want to make? I was thinking Arcana. Okay, go and give me our contract. And I'm also going to be holding up my trunk Shit. to see if I pick up any odd scents, as well as this weird light phenomenon. So with a 23 Arcana, uh, Dusty, you would know there are several magical artifacts out there that can create this white light. You know, there are several spells that can create white light. You know, um, your white light like this is not natural. Well, that's not normal light. So someone's either cast a spell or has a big flashy, flashy thing. Mm-hmm. Um, as you guys are trying to figure out what you do, the light seems to grow brighter, or it's getting closer to you. It's kind of hard to tell. Everyone hide! Can I send my fox to stealth and try to get a sight on it? Does it have a max distance it can get away from you? Well, you, even no. if you do, it can't communicate with you, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. So, it's not like a familiar where you can look through uh, its senses or anything like that. Correct, unfortunate. Mm-hmm. So it, you can, and it, you, you know, you could tell when it gets killed, if you want to try to do it that way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Go side so, it. It's so cute. It just can't, it can't speak because it's too cute. It's too baby. Mm -hmm. Nope, I will not do that then. Um, oh. Can Daniel peek through the trees? Just like get a little bit closer? So yeah, okay. Um, give me a perception check for me. Not great. No, you looking through the trees, um, you are able to tell it is getting closer to you. It's not um, growing in brightness. It's something is moving towards you. Some, whatever is the source of this is, is moving to you at a very slow pace. Like, you, you would feel like you could crawl faster than this thing is moving. Can I hold an action? Yes, you can. Uh, he's going to let loose an arrow if anyone is attacked. If they Any hostile out. action, just phew, yeah. add, add it. Got it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good plan to me. Um, Can I try to peek at what this thing is? Just kind of blending into the trees as much as possible? Are you trying to stealth or are you trying to look? Stealth and look. Okay, you can, you can do one or the other. I would like to look, but not be seen. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> okay. Think it'd be a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wow. uh, same thing for you. You can tell it's getting closer to you. And, and like I said, this thing's moving slow. Like it, it is maybe a couple feet um, every few seconds. Um, uh, 
Charles will like go like maybe uh, hide in some bushes or something to try you to like see to hide, uh, right? what give the me, thing is. Yeah, give me a stealth check. Uh, Nathan uh, is also seemingly curious about this thing. He's not quite on edge, but he's definitely like moving his head side to side, trying to look and see what this thing is. Um, and minutes go by as the the brightness of the source of lights continues to get closer to you guys. And I'm gonna start walking towards it and see if anyone stopped me. <laughs> I will. I will hold out the butt of my glaive in front of you to stop you from going for, for, further forward than me. Well, you gonna go forward? Because either we gotta figure out what this is, or it's gonna come to us first. I would rather yeah, go meet it head on. <laughs> I if we're go gonna ahead meet and it head on, on it if we're gonna meet it head on, it's best you let me be in front of you. All right. Well, in that case, can I? In that case, why don't we do this? Hello. You shout out into the forest. Your vo your 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 voice dissipates throughout the trees, um, and that's when you realize it's quiet. There is no sounds of birds, no sounds of wolves howling. It is eerily silent. The occasional rustle of wind of leaves and wind, but no animals. Um, and this light just keeps getting closer and closer. Uh, and it's to the point where you can kind of see something very large. Larger than Gwilrick is the source of this light, but you can't tell what it is. Is you just see this giant circle of white light brightly emanating. It kind of hurts to look at it directly. And it's just moving ever so slowly towards you guys. I start to shield my eyes a little bit from the light with my trunk, um, mm -hmm. but I still stand poised mm -hmm. with the glaive. Yeah. I'm not I'm not preparing to attack, but just making it clear that I'm ready to defend myself and EB. Like if there's any action I'm preparing, it's the dodge action. Uh, Caius, what are you doing? I don't think you, you said you were trying to do something yet. I was just uh pu pull out my sword and kind of stand right next to uh Wilrick. Yeah. Prepared for whatever. Right, so you guys going. are like looking, you're like one of you's hiding, the, you know, you guys are ready ready for something to happen. And Soon, through the trees, you just see it's as it gets closer and closer. Every like I said, this thing's moving very slow. It's a giant orb of white light, and by giant I mean like 15 feet across. And as it's moving through the forest, it's just phasing through the trees, as if the trees aren't there. It's just moving, and it's heading straight for you, Gulrick. Um, our. Can we see what's happening to the trees as a result of it phasing through them? Um, you can, and it seems as if it's having no effect on them at all. As if the trees are getting, you know, the light's coming off of it and everything, and hitting the trees and casting shadows and things like that, but the trees seem unaffected by it. Can you I hear no sound. Can... Just moving ever so slowly. Can I... Does can this I at all look like anything from what I've been taught about ghosts and spirits? No, it does not. Okay. Actually, going to be a history check as well. Or, it's still going to be history. a no, but give me a history check. History check, yeah. not a religion check. That's sad. Okay. I can help you out. It's a memory thing, so. I'll okay, try to help well. him out. So. Yeah, yeah, you can, get, you can help him out. Go ahead and roll with advantage school work. All right, then here's uh, the advantage roll. Yeah, it doesn't exact matter. Exact same. Um, Wait a yeah. second. No, you, hold on. Hold on. Does that inspiration, bardic inspiration, last for like 10 minutes, right? True. It's been longer than 10 minutes. Yeah. It's been like half an okay. hour. Okay. Minimum half. Because you, you had to make pelt. sure. Like, this thing's mm. moving slow. You guys have been watching this thing for like over 10 minutes, like ready for something to happen. Gotcha. Um, Just make it sure. Yeah, you're all good. Can I touch um, it? Can I? Are you. So. Um. Uh. Phoenix is going to try to move closer. Is he, if does anyone going to do anything about that? Like I'm going to join what him. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I, I, are, am I getting if, prevented by Gwilrick? So, well, if they're if it's clear they're both going to be moving up, I'm going to at least stay between them and try to be a little bit ahead to be more mm -hmm. presentable because it's like, hey, yeah. It's, it's, mm. Can I grab like uh, like maybe a little stone, an acorn, something from the ground and throw it in this general direction? So, um, See what happens. And then Caius and um, Daniel, what are you two going to be doing? I'm going to uh, kind of step out of the path that I can see that it's going to. It's mm -hmm. like, I'll just walk a little bit to the right, just like still kind of watching them, 
mm-hmm. but not in its path because it, it's it's obviously going one way, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then Daniel, what are you what are you doing? Uh, still just holding the same action, but I'll like move up a little bit, maybe take cover around like a tree. Are you gonna try to get out of its way as well? Nah, I'll take a clear line of sight for a good shot. Okay. Okay. What so I you're be- like standing right where it's going. Okay. Um, yeah, what were you saying, Dusty? Would I be able to make an insight check to see if it means us harm? Um, no, you cannot. Okay. I'm an insight. There's no facial features or anything. Yeah. Um. So, Gwilwerk, you guys are getting closer and closer to this thing, and it seems to be heading in the same exact direction. Um, if you guys move left and right, it doesn't seem to be following any of you. It's just moving is it, ever so slowly. Is it moving at any like particular pace or rhythm? It's moving at a constant pace. I will give you that. Is it any? Is it anything natural that I might have seen before, or anything that yeah, I might have heard about? Check. Sure. Mm. Come on, don't fail me now. It failed right. me now. Uh, this is you have never seen anything like this in your life. Never heard of anything like this either. Never I've heard of anything. anything like this. The closest thing you could think of is maybe something to do with nature magic. This may be some type of orb of nature essence, something, 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 something. You can't quite. Yeah, tell. I want to touch it. Yeah. Um, that is like, and it's like a low chance of it being that. You're like, that's like your best guess. Yeah. But um, uh, Nathan is definitely like, I wouldn't touch that thing, guys. That thing doesn't seem normal. And he, he's looking at it like he's like very cautious what his thing is. He's, yeah, he looks seems like very something... confused. I am going. Does it I... look like something you heard of, or yeah. like in... gonna... it looks like it's nothing I've ever heard of before or seen? I'm gonna oh. pet my fox and just go touch and send my fox to see to touch it. Yeah. Uh, your fox goes up to it, and it's hovering off the ground, probably like three, four, five feet above the ground. Um. And it would leap out at it, and your connection, poof, it's, dead, it's gone. Um, someone said they want to throw a rock or acorn at it, right? Yes. Uh, the acorn would just sail right through it as if it didn't exist. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so Same thing with the rock. It's a light. It's in. It's incorporeal. It's not. Like said, we it's should get out of its feet. way. It's still. It's moving. Yeah. It's just steadily moving, like maybe a foot every okay. minute, every 30 seconds or so. Hey, Even Fen- so, it's like... Fennec, when... how does your connection with your spirit work? Did you feel when it dies? Or did it die, or did it just, like, lose connection and poof out? That's a good question for the uh, DM. Yeah, so it... This is your first time having it, so you don't know. It just You just lost connection. You didn't feel any pain. You didn't feel any anything at all you don't know that's normal or not it's just okay. lost connection okay. dusty tries to say hi in every language he knows yep it just keeps yeah moving forward yeah at this point i'm going to be rather insistently moving a bit out of moving out of mm-hmm. the way of it you know yeah. taking dusty and the bright white me. light is, is shining in all directions um any trees that enter, that enter its path just it just goes right through the trees okay as if it's I'm, not there May I plant yeah, it? Yeah, I wonder if it only affects things that aren't natural to this place. It doesn't seem to affect anything that's natural, but it seems mm. it dispe- I think it dispelled my magic. Wait, if it's not yeah. natural, I, can I hold up a man-made object to it? What Please. do you hold up to it? I'm going to put my rapier up to it, but uh, not the blade part, the handle first, so I, not, I'm not like attacking it. So you're going like, to hold the blade part and like yeah. Stick the handle part into it. Yeah. Like, um, like presenting the sword to someone else. Yeah. Got it. Um, so you have to get very close to the thing when you do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to need a con save from you. Okay. Mm. 14. Cool. Um, as you approach this, you have this... Once you get about 10, 15 feet away from it, you just feel this sudden power emanating from it. Um, that for only the briefest of moments feels familiar. Huh. And then you feel compelled to move away from it. Okay. Did I, um, was that a fail or a pass? I'm not sure. You don't know. 
Okay. Well, the thing that seems you want to be left alone, it's rejecting me, so I'm just gonna play a jaunty tune for it and let send it on its way. I play it like an accompanying travel song while it travels through the forest. I say we leave the bright orb alone and let it continue its path. Maybe we could follow it. Yeah, it's heading southwardly ish. True! And something about it feels familiar. Not sure why. I say we follow it. Yes, but it's I a mean, bit slow, it, you know, still. <laughs> that's, it's, it's, that's what I was about to point out. It's it's moving pretty slowly. Whatever it's doing, it's not going there in a hurry. Well, that just means we have a nice, relaxing walk. Have you ever long, walked roughly. slowly? We can, like, take like, a break. Very slowly. We can take a break and keep it in sight, then move when it moves. Like... Have you ever tried going on a stroll with relatives who are not really in peak physical condition? I don't know. I don't have any family. Yes, well, it can actually be more stressful and painful to walk slower than you're accustomed to than it is to walk faster. Okay, then we'll just keep it in sight and uh, we'll walk once it's out of sight. Almost out of or sight. Or we could just let it go on its way and uh, but because our... But aren't you curious, Gulrick? What if it's a spirit? What if it could help you figure out your bone dreams? It's not one of those spirits, trust me. Uh, I don't know what it is. That's the problem. Uh, That's the only way we're going to find out. Our, our guide, our babysitter here, does not know what it is. It, my guess is this is something that we should remember. And when we bring in these pelts for payment, we make note, report, whatever, of that thing to others at the guild. I'm sure they could look into it. And I look at Nathan like, am I along the right lines of thinking there? Nathan is going to say, neither choice is wrong. Following mm. it doesn't seem, he's like he says, it's not dangerous, so long as we're like, he's like, you know, clearly more than 15 feet away from it. <laughs> he's like, it's <laughs> not affecting us, so following isn't wrong. Adventurers are supposed to investigate interesting new weird things. However, reporting it is also the right thing to do. And it's up to you guys and what you want to do. So uh, long as you guys aren't going to like stand in its way, I think we're fine. Mm. Yes, because I I think, well, here's the thing. It's I'm not against the notion of following it, but again, we don't know what it is. And uh, to put it in other terms, where's that uh, list of the levels for jobs? <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan will say oh yeah there it is okay. I, for all we know that that thing could be an adamantine level threat okay Nathan will say it's very odd how slow it is moving yeah does it is it moving like in a straight line or is it uh, like does it give have me a, a perception show? check okay can I can I also take a look at that with them yeah go ahead go for it uh if Phoenix is better lit, I think I would just give her um, him assist. <laughs> right, yeah, if you Phoenix would roll for an advantage. Yeah, you're much better at it than... Uh, 15! Uh, All right! Beautiful. So, you two are looking at this as it's moving. And one thing you realize after, like, kind of, like, watching it, moving, watching it, the ball isn't moving. You're moving. Uh... What? What? We're being pulled along. <laughs> the facet is moving in space. The orb is stationary. Ooh. Oh, yeah, uh, the facets are floating. Nathan? That's interesting. N Nathan? Yeah? The facet is moving. Well, yeah, facets move. What, the, what else is new? The ball is yeah, I mean, stationary. The, oh, wait, the I don't orb know that. stays in place. The it's orb the is facet. Uh, that's Nathan's like, Nathan now looks really confused and also very interesting. He's like, it, it has to be moving. That's a, it, Nothing doesn't move. It can't just... What do you mean it doesn't move? When the, the facet moves away, it's just going to fall into the void. There's nothing down there. It's the void for a reason. It's not moving. Yes. Of, of course it's moving. It has to. He's like... No, look. Look, look carefully, you see? And he's going to like, look at it. And he's going to be like... Fuck, you're right. That's that's not normal, he says. That's 
e even riffs move with the facet. So we're dealing Most with people... something. Oh, go ahead. We're we're dealing with something that is not moved by something that moves even riffs. That's okay. I'm really thinking this is above our pay grade here. Yeah, I'm it's... I'm starting to agree with Wilbur here now. That's strong yeah, magic. Yeah. But I want to know, like, well, like now, Knight is like, but like, if if it's floating in the void, like, how do you find it again? Well, you know, are there stars? I mean, yeah, yeah. You do see. I mean, there are stars, but like, in in D D, stars move as well. So. Does mm. anyone have detect magic or identify? Because I do not. Oh, I do. Uh, maybe, maybe like, um, is there like, uh, like mass or shots of all the facets move? Nathan was shock. You had no idea. Mm. Can, I cast, yeah. Can I cast identify on it? You have to touch it. Do you wish to reach out and try to touch it while you cast identify? <laughs> do it. Fuck it. Do it. Let's do see it. what happens. Do it. I, I need another con save from you. Okay. <laughs> Refuse your to control your impulses. Seventeen. Ready. A few things are going to happen. First off, you do cast a spell. It does go off. However, I need you to roll me a d100. Oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I might be my old character. Thirty-three. 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 That's an interesting number. Does Does um, he get a beard of feathers that comes off the instant he sneezes? Who knows what's going to happen? Um. It, it's. 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 Magic, who knows? That's one of um, my favorite wild magic effects. And can you post the text of an NFI for me? I would appreciate that. Okay, just a second. Uh, so I can get the exact wording nice down, because I you. genuinely remember what it is. But um, You must touch not to cast the spell, if it's magic item, or some other magic imbued object. Um, hmm. Interesting, 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 interesting. Oh, it works on creatures too. So, <laughs> um, re-roll it for me. Re-roll the D one hundred. Yeah. Oh, that means nothing happens. So my safety's gone. That doesn't mean what it means. Sixty-eight. Let's see here. Ah, uh, one off. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, uh, I need to open up another thing. Give me one moment here. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what you, you feel from it. Um, you learn its properties, requires or recharge attunements. Okay. So, you have cast a spell a couple of times, I'm assuming, through your, your, your years of research as a level one uh, bard. Yeah. Um, you have um, gotten pretty consistent types of, um, what's it called? responses of you know if it's a magic item you know how it works things like that yeah um this time is something different when you touch it as you reach out to touch it that field of power you're able to push your way through it and your fingertips just grace the orb itself mm -hmm. oh, it's an orb. and huh it, it's an orb okay it's an orb yeah it's an orb it is a sphere of white light and you you feel what can only be just the best way you can describe it is if um light had a physical being and you do know it is a magic item at the same time <laughs> um you would know this is the most powerful magic thing you have ever experienced more yeah. powerful than the pillars more powerful than anything you have ever seen or probably ever heard of oh man my level two ass is getting smoted um now for your d100 a spell is cast and i'm trying to figure out which one it is um you would feel your body no that's not that's not the right spell um do, do, do. I'm trying to figure out which one would be Okay. Uh what you would feel happen is your mind becomes 
how, how, how would this feel to you? What's your intelligence score? It is currently a 12. You feel your mind become devoid of emotions, and you're able to logically calculate everything perfectly. For okay. the briefest of moments. Mm. And in that time, a few things register in your mind. One, you do confirm that the fact that the orb is or not moving, the facet's moving under it. Two, you realize you become self-aware like all your emotion is gone. And then at that exact same moment, all your emotions flood back into your mind. Okay. And you feel you're pushed back away from the orb. So. You're alive! It's an orb of depression! <laughs> what? What? Orb of depression. Nathan, like, mouths orb of depression. I don't know. It, t it took all my emotions for a second. What did you learn about it? it it's definitely... Okay. It feels like it's a solid light form. It's an orb in there. The facet's mm -hmm. definitely moving under it. It seems to have stolen all my emotions, and I became logical and aware that I didn't have emotions. Then all of them came flooded back and knocked me out like a big feels punch. And it's also the most did, powerful thing I have ever touched. Did Dusty learn its properties and, and how to use them? Um, no, it is too much for him to recognize. Okay. What is this thing? I feel just as curious as when we first found it. <clears throat> well, I'm not doing that again, so... Ugh. Then you want to have to tech match? Just curious as a, as a DM. I do. Nope. Mm. Dusty's our um, <laughs> uh, makeshift ar artificer. Do I have to cast <laughs> tech magic too? You should I mean, do, do it. You? I'll do it. I, mean, That's I'll do other, it. That, I only have three spell slots, guys. Well, that's most, two of people, them. Yeah. most people cast detect magic before they go with identify. <laughs> well, I was no, trying to be efficient. Right. I mean, if you know right. it's magic, right. you don't need right. to cast detect magic. Also, you can you can ritual cast if you're worried yeah, about your spells. Ritual spots. casting. It's, uh, it's moving slow enough. You could ritual cast it. Bards can't ritual cast. Oh, yes, that's they right. Can. They can't. Yes, yeah, they can. can. Let's look. Oh. Let's look. Let's look. Let's look. Hold on. Let's, let's look. Yeah. They, we got time. They play songs. Yeah, they got close. instruments. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can we can take a peek. It, I okay. got to a point with my lizard man bard that I was able to cast legend lore, and I uh, did so. You can cast a ritual spell. It is yes. Okay, you can. then it's I will the ritually account. cast detect magic. Yeah, I would I would ritually cast by doing a drum solo with the ivory sticks that are a component, and just said, yeah, it's basically <laughs> it's basically a Neil um, drum solo. So ten minutes go by. Um. I'm, I'm assuming you would like go down range of where you where the where the orb is assuming to be going. Yep. Mm -hmm. Math out the ten minutes, and ten minutes go by, and uh, can you see? Tell me what de detect magic does again. I know I know one aspect of it, and that's the one I care about. Let's make sure there's nothing else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just check the actual, let me check the actual wording. Yep, 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 yep. Just, I, I just want to see what it does. For the duration, the top, if you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. You learn a school of magic, if any. The spell mm -hmm. can create okay. most barriers, but it is blocked by one foot of stone, Beautiful. one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to cut to the chase. The orb is abjuration. And I don't it mean it is the school of magic of abjuration. I mean it is abjuration. Oh. Mm. You get the feeling it is the essence of an abjuration spell. Uh. It's the best like, way to describe it. Like it's like it's the core of all abjuration magic. <laughs> uh, maybe not the core. Maybe not that much. So you know how magic items have an aura around it. You. Yeah. This thing is only aura. This is content. Uh, Nathan, the, this is... the closest thing you can think of is when you are looking at a spell, this looks like it's a spell of abjuration. Nathan, this is pure concentrated abjuration runoff into a thing. 
into like you know how aberration spells have like a little aura around them that is from their school of magic this is like all that runoff put together Nathan so, looks severely confused because he's not a wizard, he's not a mage, so but he he's heard a few things he knows like rudimentary, um, you know, wizard one oh one. Um So this thing is dispelling magic, just like we thought. No, it isn't. It's just concentrated magic. What uh so what would happen oh. if someone used an abjuration? If it was spell, dispelling magic, yeah. I wouldn't be able to cast my spells. Probably have some of the surrounding magic. Nathan does uh, point out, Counterspell is the Abjuration spell, I do know that. What uh, Abjuration is the I'm, school of protection and and protection specifically from other magic and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But this is... Is there, any, yeah. is there anything else that Abjuration does? I'm not well versed in magic, obviously. It's uh, mostly but... a defensive school. Mm, Nathan's like, I know a few spells, counter spell, I know the banishment spell, which is very good for, for guiding against rift monsters. It's also abjuration. Um, so wait, abjuration covers moving things? No, this what thing isn't mean? moving. Well, I mean, just like if you say it, you refer to a banishment spell. I've yeah. So abjuration isn't just defense; it's also no, I. Banishment it's... doesn't mean what you think it means. Banishment basically locks it inside a small plane or prison. No, it also sends it back to its home plane if it's not oh, from yes. this one. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. So there's like... a locational aspect that can come up in spells of the Abjuration school. Abjuration yes, is... not uh... all of them. What, what Nathan, spell Nathan at this point shrugs. He's like, I just know a few spells at the school. I don't know the exact was... ma okay, the knowledge think? of it. I'm, I'm thinking of imprisonment, not banishment. Mm -hmm. uh, Aberration is a school of magic that deals a lot with protection. So, mm -hmm. someone casts magic, you can cast counter spell to defend yourself from that magic. Turn the spell off to counter Turn the spell off. Disrupt the magic from it. Nathan says. I, again, I'm like, not a wizard. I wouldn't know anything about it. But um, I have a question, and I feel like this is Dusty being a bad influence on me. Should I try to grab it? No. I wouldn't. No. Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to get everyone's consensus on that idea. Oh, and the well, more we learn about it, Nathan says, the more I don't want to be enrounded anymore. So wait, I think well, we need back to... up. Aren't rifts like giant things that explode onto random facets and they're hard to predict? Nathan says, rifts are where the fabric between our plane and the other planes become non-existent. They rub away from each other. Have you ever um, seen a rift pop open? Yes, few actually. Was this in any there are of them? early warning signs to them. Okay. Um, in, uh, the the DM reopens his uh, rules. Uh, so he's like, time speeding up and slowing down is a, a good t t one. Um, wild animals fleeing the area, wild magic surges. Those are very dangerous when they do happen. Uh, uh... Drastic weather changes. Divination magic does not work in the area of a rift when it's about to open. Did. Okay, did I... Did the wild magic surge... Did I, did, would I recognize that rolling D100 as a wild magic thing? No, that was not. I would say as a DM, that was not a wild magic surge. That was... Hand on head speaking as a DM. This is not you realizing. This is a defensive measure. Okay. Hmm. I feel like this might be a locked rift. Nathan like this would like... Rifts, you can't lock a rift. You either use a narc and you're able to repair the fabric around it and close them. You don't pause them in time. Well, you just said yourself you've never seen this before, so what if you could? Uh, it's like, what would be the purpose of pausing a rift? Um, if just... you're only one guy and you don't have the tools to do it, then you don't want everyone around you to die? I mean, it's like, well, I think it's that's... too early to make mm... hypothesis and yeah, hypotheses yeah. about this. I think that we leave this to a powerful mage who can well, here's the thing. properly... If also... It's... If it's stuck in the void, he, we have no clue when we'll see this again because the flash is floating. Here's the thing. Um, he, he just said that divination magic doesn't work around it, and although I am not a magic user, I'm aware of what divination magic is from traditions of the Bone Dreamers, and it sounds like the spells you were just casting on it would fall under that territory. Well, that's what I'm saying. If it's locked, he said those were symptoms of when it's about to open. 
And if it's locked, maybe it the it's ruled differently because it's not affecting anything. I think that this isn't a rift, Dusty. There's no, no signs to it being a rift, so therefore we can't prove that it is. We said it's abjuration, right? Yes, pure Yeah, that's the school of magic Dusty got from it, yes. Yeah, while well, everyone's talking, I'm gonna cast Armor of Agathus, since it's an abjuration spell, like, near it, and see if near? anything reacts. Um, yeah. You cast your spell, nothing happens. It goes off perfectly fine. So, the orb doesn't react in any way. Um, yeah, so long as you're not within 15, so long as you're not 15 feet of it, nothing happens. Well, I wanted to get close without making a con save to see, like, if anything reacted yep. since it'd be in the same school of magic. I'm, I'm assuming you're, like, 17 feet away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you cast your spell, um, it doesn't react in any way. Um, the light shines on you differently because you have the armor on now, the, the ice little stuff, but that's about it. Keep in mind, the time time you guys are talking and everything, it just still it's still just slowly moving as if you guys aren't there. It doesn't care about you at all. Or rather, the facet is moving well, if we get back quickly, hopefully we can get a report in and then someone can start making like a bridge once it starts floating off the, the facet starts floating. Yes, I mean, it's not moving too fast, so we should have time to go back to... Uh, but it, it is, is moving in. toward the edge of the facet. You yeah, guys are already... that's the issue. Mm, is it is the facet moving like uh, in a way that it will go back to the void or it would go like more towards the center? Uh, toward the void, to the south. Like, it's, you look going at the map south, here. it's going south, and we're here in the Snowbell Forest. It's moving more or less in this general direction. Yeah, not, more true, south. not true south, but it's moving south-ish. Yeah, well, actually, it's not moving, moving, the bats is moving north. Yeah, the facet is moving north-ish. <laughs> okay. We, we can't do anything with it. Well, if like, we go to Snowbell, to maybe we can convince them to keep a watch on it until we can get like a proper research team to start building a bridge out there. Nathan shrugs his point. He's like, technically, this is still on you guys. I am here as a mentor, uh, but uh, I, I will say we strongly do need to return to the guild and let people know. Yes. Well, let's yes, go to Snow is... Bell as a stop off and hope they can keep it because then we'll have to go. We're not getting Goswell before this thing gets off the edge. That's a two day trip or day and a half. Yeah, that's one and a half. And, uh... We travel through the night. And here, that's, yeah, it's one and a half anyway. So I say we travel we cross the, uh, the white forest. That's what I'm saying. Go to Snowbell because uh, they they like us already because we solved their corpse problem. Oh yeah, even if we don't go through, yeah. I say we don't engage anyone yeah, with this. maybe maybe we can have some We're people. Just going to create panic. That's why Let's... we only tell the mayor. I don't think it's necessary. The mayor. The there... mayor will tell some people, some guards in town, who may tell their family, who like it's. It's well, here's the thing. Uh... Like, can I calculate? Can I do a math? Can I math this out and figure out how long it will take to get to the edge versus us getting? Give me a off? basic intelligence check. Okay. Can I help? Oh no, never mind. They're fine. You're okay. Um, the seventeen. Um, uh, DM is remembering his notes. Um, you guess it would reach the edge before the end of tomorrow. It's getting reached the edge before the end of tomorrow. There's no way we're getting back in time before it's off the edge. We need to have someone keep a watch on it, or at least build something out before we get a guild here. If we can go through the forest, go back in a day, and then someone can teleport here, not to the pillar, but using a stronger magic than we have. But we're already halfway exhausted. Uh, DM, do I need to make a roll to touch it? Uh, if you were to touch it, it would be a con save. I'm going to just do this. Go for it. Dusty, we're wasting time. Mm -hmm. Roll on the L1D100, please. I'm trying to say to give us more time. What are you arguing? Ben just walks up to it, puts his hand, and... Yeah, with the confidence of, like, the armor, I'm just, you know, like... Uh, ring first, like, you know, like, kind of like a fist bump. Okay. Um, you still ring. make contact with it. Um, again, yeah. um, it feels like liquid light. Um, as you touch it, you would feel your entire body become too heavy, and you collapse to the ground. Oh, God um, darn it. Mm -hmm. And you feel like there's something inside of you holding you down. Like if gravity's doubled, kind of? Not gravity. No, no, no. It's not a gravity thing. It's as if, like, 
You try to move or wiggle or do anything, and you're not able to move. Um, give me a quick just medicine check on yourself there, Ben. Can Phoenix run up and, and try to Yeah, you see can just collapse to the ground, yeah. Phoenix is going to run up. Um, I assume I might be end- entering its field, but he's going to try will. to... You will, so you're going to make a con save too, but you're not touching it, so we don't need the hunter from you. Um, with a nine, Ben, it, it's like something inside of you is holding you down. Uh, Phoenix, you are able to reach, uh, Ben. Yeah. You're trying to grab and pull him out? Yeah, I want to drag him away from the orb. I need a strength athletics check. But I'm bad at that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run over and help. Bridge! Uh, Give me a save as well. Uh, yeah, Phoenix, you you go to grab him, and his flesh, you know, feels normal. Um, and you try to pull him, and he just feels like as if he weighs, like, ten times more than you've ever felt him before. Um, Caius, you get propelled away. Um, oh, okay. From it, not like forcibly, but you just get this feeling of like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't go near it. Okay. <laughs> All right. well, look, I need your help. I'll say as I, I continue know. to carry or him just... out. <laughs> I will go over and attempt to uh, pull. Um... Ben, what's ben. your character's name again? Daniel. 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 I will attempt to pull Daniel away from the orb. Give me a con save. See if you can get nearby. <sighs> yep. Let's see. Con save. <laughs> Unfortunately not. You get close and you're just like, I don't know about this. Um, <laughs> nope. Did I take any damage from it? Or did no, I no damage. Fall? You just collapse right. the ground. Um, you feel like the you're like not sinking into the dirt, but definitely like you're, you're like you are sinking, but like only like a few centimeters as if you're something heavy being, you know, on the ground. It oh, like I, like I indented the dirt? Like there's yeah. an imprint now? Yeah. Visibly? Oh, that's... Cool. Dusty, can you dispel? You can't move. You're. you're, you're I can't, you just can't no, move. I don't have that one. That's level two. Damn it. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Now Phoenix is definitely just trying to, still trying to drag him away. Yeah, you're just like trying it? to pull him and stuff. Give me another athletic check, sure. Why don't you like okay. Wilric do that? Because Wilric won't it's come. It's. There's. Nothing we can do about that. I. This is after, beyond us. This is after, beyond what we can do. This is beyond our knowledge. Oh no! I was talking about picking him up. He can't get. He, he so um Daniel and uh, Phoenix are within fifteen feet of the orb, and he didn't pass his con save, so he he in character does not want to go <laughs> near it. I'm assuming my eleven that. doesn't make much of a difference for athletics. No, it doesn't. Um, but as you guys are arguing, you're screaming, you're trying to pull him away. Um, about a minute passes, and like I said, this thing maybe has moved a foot, maybe two. Um, Daniel, you feel whatever was preventing you from moving is gone. You can move your body again. Okay. However, you feel as if you just worked out a hundred days in a row. How many levels of exhaustion is that? Uh, you do have two levels of exhaustion on you now. Oh, oh shit! shit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. By the way, the sheet has an exhaustion tracker you can turn on. I think. I think that's like half your speed or something now. Um, no, that's that's three levels. As someone who almost died of exhaustion once, I I know the exhaustion levels very well. Five levels is death. <laughs> five levels, six levels is death. Five levels oh, is complete. Um, you can't move anything. You're prone. No one, it, mm-hmm. and you your only hope is lesser or greater yeah. or greater restoration. Yeah, you feel super exhausted. Your muscles are super fatigued. You're barely able to like just kind of crawl away, and you like fall back to the ground again. Uh, you see where you were on the ground is a perfect impression of where you fell, as if something very, very, very heavy was there. Um, what the balls? It didn't feel like a gravity thing. It felt like as if you just suddenly weighed more. But it was so something you inside of you that weighs more. Okay. Now we have an exhausted party member, and you want to, and we're gonna have to push the night to get to Gulswell fast. So the best option is to go to Snowbell, inform someone we can at least basically trust to watch it, then go rest and go to Gosswell. Someone watching it is just going to get killed or buried into the... Hi, Gabe. Sorry, my cat just jumped on me. Tracking um, it. Look. Buried. This thing, I, there is I say simply, go. Yeah, there's no way we're going to get back before this thing's off the facet. I don't think it's a good idea to spread word around to small time mayors this is something we should report to people directly in the guild who could actually do something about it 
For all we know, someone might be able to fly out to closer examine it once then it's why don't we, we know that... Then, okay, yeah. Since we're equal distance for both, why don't we tell Smoothest Silk or Lulu Bell if they're back there? No! Isn't Smoothest Silk part of the Adventurer's Guild? Like, he's a representative? I think he is a member of the Guild, you do remember that. So I thought Smooth as Silk was, like, affiliated with the Guild. He is. You do remember that. Okay, so why don't well, we pass by there and at least inform him? Well, if we come across him, sure, we'll tell him, but we have to come across him. So There's I'm... no point in telling him. What is the point of telling him? Nothing. The point is to get it set up so we have an observation post on this weird magic, or at least someone to watch it so it doesn't go out the facet and then we don't know where it went because no one was watching it. I think it's pointless, Dusty. Why would watching something weird be pointless? Isn't that half of research? I mean, you're a mercenary. You've been on stakeouts before. You have to watch and listen and wait. Dusty, the point is that there's nothing we can do in the time that it's going to take for it to leave the facet. All we can do is head back to the guild... Let them um, know what we saw, the properties of this thing, the direction it was going in. It takes the most speed of a day, was... and the village where I was talking about is half a day away. We already did the check. Let's go straight through the white forest and go back to the pillar. I'm outvoted, so let's go. Nathan's going to ask you guys what is the plan. As much as I would like to do things of my own accord, uh, I think this is a great chance to have you all learn something. I mean, we I'm... can tell Dick about it and hope he jumps in it and, you know, uh, <clears throat> disappear, but... Um... I'm, in, I'm in favor of beelining it towards Gostwell, but we do need to... We can't push ourselves, especially not with... Uh, Daniel, yeah. in his condition here. I'm yawning <laughs> so much. <laughs> so if we have to stop anyways, you may as well take we may as well take the point with me. <laughs> That's going to prolong our journey. It, I, it's beelining it and taking a rest, Dusty, is still faster. It's going to be the same. Cause it's, wait, if we take a rest, because it's a day and a half, no matter what we do, it's going to take the same. No, because you get it, you it causes extra time, and then you add the rest onto that. Yes, it's not simply like if we go to Snowvale or the other village, it's like popping in, dropping off a message, and leaving. No, there's going to be explaining this to somebody there. We're going to have to deal with that back at the guild anyway. Yeah, Unless that's... there's a guild representative who can instantly communicate with those back at the Convergence in Snowvale or that other village... It's going to be kind of pointless. Keep in mind, the orb is still moving there this entire time you guys are arguing. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I, let's... Yeah. Fennec is going to start walking. Better if we just yeah, Nathan, go back to the you wouldn't happen to have a speaker stone on you, would you? Nathan says, I am not here. So you do yeah, have I'm, one. I'm going to pick up Daniel and, you know, if as long as... Wait, can I not against... walk? Oh, well, you can. You're walk. at half speed. Yeah, I'm... It's clear that you're uh, moving sluggishly, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick you up and just gently carry you. So because you do unless still you weigh, you move how much at you half weigh? speed. Um, if you're carrying someone, another living it? creature, mechanically you move at half speed. Yeah, that depends on how much he weighs. Mm. So, so I will say, um, how I am going to rule this is. Don't uh, locks it out to have the powerful build you, trait. Yes, they do. They have powerful build, so they count as Ooh. one size larger. So I'm going to allow him to move at normal speed. Um, cool. So. Cool. Love I'll it. have to drop uh -huh. you if we get into combat because I got yeah. a two-handed weapon. But so still. yeah, just keep in mind, it, it takes both your hands and everything to to you know control him. Wait, stuff, doesn't so. he have a weapon too? Daniel does, but if he's being carried, he can't do anything with yeah, it. Yeah, I just have like a dagger and a bow, so it's like slung over me. Okay, just hold the Daniel, dagger out, and then Rona can use you like a glaive. That's... Daniel, try to sleep. He won't be. Able... Yeah, you can't sleep while. Well. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. Sleep, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Actually, wait. Oh wait, no, I don't think that. Let me check something real quick. I don't think this will work, but. 
Oh, are you gonna do the rest thing? In the meantime, the, I think we're all because like you, I believe you are going inside yes. my my vessel, but I um, think he has to stand in the same spot. Like I don't think anyone can carry it with them. What were you trying to do? Uh, you like the genie ability is there since the oh. ring is a vessel, you could hop in it yeah. for four hours, and coincidentally, my long rest is four hours. But so yes, you can take a rest in there. Yes, I believe. But uh, I think it can't be moved while it's like being used, I, or I'm trying to find out. I think it can. I'm pretty sure it can be. An issue, issue that gives it. This does matter. I will pause good. for a little bit to uh, research this because it does matter. Um, it but, could but, 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 save us a lot of trouble if you it's, can pop into that. We, we can, can carry the we can while take you a level rest. of exhaustion. Uh, we can all take uh, a level of exhaustion and, and travel through. Mm -hmm. We just don't want to kill Daniel. How does exhaustion work? Like, is it like one long rest per point, or do all of them go away yeah. once I rest? Basically, the long you lose you one point per long rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Great. Um. Great. So I will say, um. Sleeping in the vessel, you the vessel can be moved while you're inside of it, yes. And okay. you can bring in up to um how many people? You magically vanish. Um oh, it's not until uh you hit tenth level you can bring other people. So only you can go yeah. into your bottle or to your ring. So, yeah, so no. if you wish to uh, reveal that card to your party, you are able to. Yeah, no, so as um Gwilwork is trying to pick me up, I'm like, I uh uh, appreciate the uh, the intention, but here, can you hold on to this for me? And I'm gonna place, I'm gonna remove the ring from my mm -hmm. hand and place it in his, and just poof, he just disappears. Yep. Yep. Stop. Are Are you okay in there? Are you in? <laughs> What's going on uh, here? Just do not lose this, and uh, I'm gonna just knock out for. However long I need to be, or at least for four hours. I don't know yeah, how long. You require four hours, and you can stay in the ring for four hours. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I will tuck it into my uh, pouch and just be like, well, that makes things easier. Um, pocket Daniel! Pocket Daniel. So yeah, so okay. you're able to move at a normal pace without any problems. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about carrying him. You can stay on alert. Can we move at everything. a fast pace? Uh, so yes, you can move at a fast pace. So you will get there faster, but you're moving through the night, so you're all going to gain a level of exhaustion. Uh, let Yay! me do some DM math real quick. Con considering the uh, situation, I do not mind the notion of a, of a level of exhaustion. You all were able to get to Gaustwell uh, before the end of the next day if you fast pace, but you will all have a level of exhaustion. Minus, mm. uh, well, how it would work was Ben will come out four hours later, and then you would get it again. This, the, the exhaustion level, but you'll be in gospel, so you won't be bogged down or anything like that. So, um, so the, for the first four hours, if you guys are traveling uh, northward, um, you guys are making a beeline to it. You guys have been to Tacost for several days. Uh, you guys have a general idea of where things are at, um, especially with a barbarian and a druid. You guys aren't going to get lost too hard with the sun and the roads and everything like that. Uh, you guys go through the white forest. Um, you guys go through all the way there. You are not running, but you guys are moving at a fast pace. You're not stopping to smell any roses. Once we um, get once we get to the White Forest, I start to stomp a little heavier because mm -hmm. I don't know what wildlife is there. But if there's anything predatory, I'm trying to ward it away. Right, that makes sense. You could be attracting um, it by stomping. Um, as so you guys are moving through the forest very rapidly and things, um, and you get to Gaswell, you get to the Pillar Town, you guys are like I said, exhausted, you're tired. Um, it is... Uh, but yep, you got, you're able to get there. You get to the pillar, I'm assuming you're heading back to the Convergence. <sighs> we made it. <sighs> so we each have one level of exhaustion? Uh, yep. Well, Ben, you have two. You're back at two. But Wait, you so how long was the, hey, how long hey, was the journey? It, it, it takes you a day to get there. So... Mm. You gain another level. You, you, you get... You, you, because you were only in there for four hours, right? Yeah, for the so, first day. Could I have for, done it again on the the second? Because it took like over a day. If you were wanting to do that, I, I, it's, it's up to your party. I mean, sure. I, 
considering that the ring does not slow us down and, you know, it's like, hey, we're all taking exhaustion here, may as well mitigate the damage where we can. I'm certainly not against him doing that. Look at Daniel. Yeah, I'll be like, since it worked so well before, I'll, like, give it to Quilrick again. We so are about to... Really. We are about to go back to, uh, I'm pretty sure we're weak in long rest, and one of our long rests is two of yours anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Um, it, it is, it, it, either way, uh, I think at this point, semantics. Because um, you can just you can hear what's going on outside the ring, so you can hop out when you get yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so you guys get back to the Convergence. I'm guessing you're heading to the guild? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You get back to the guild. Um, people are looking at you like you're, you know, you guys are tired, exhausted, and you're just moving sluggishly. Um, but you all have this determination on your faces to get here as soon as possible. Um, you, I guess, you guys go to the front desk. Or somewhere else. You going? What do you guys do? You guys are there. Okay. I go Turn to, to Nathan and be like, "Who should be report?" Ask for the manager. <laughs> uh, Nathan says, um, I, "I he he will at this point kind of step in um, because yeah. you are out of." He he will tell you guys you're like this is a little outside your rank. Um, he's going to go to the front desk. He's going to tell you all to go upstairs to the room where you had that the meeting. All right. That's where he's going to tell you guys to go. Um, there. He says you guys pushed hard. You did. You guys, I expect you guys to take it slow. You guys got here fast. I will give you a little leniency here. Just go up there, rest. I'll I'll get the people in that room here soon. That's um, good okay. to know. Yeah, he, he is he is going to be beloved. <laughs> uh, he's impressed with your um, efforts. So he is going to um, do his thing. You guys go up there. I'm assuming you guys just basically collapse into the couches, um, things of that nature. Um, uh, I forget. Is there food in that room? There is food in here and things like that. Yes. <laughs> um, it's more snacks, healthy snacks, like, you know, protein bars, fruits. You know what? <laughs> Water I'm bottles. With that. Yeah. Um, maybe some juice. Um, things like that. Um, you guys are in there for maybe half an hour, pushing an hour at this point. Um, when the door would open, in would come Nathan and two other people. Um, the first person is is a high is a high elf with silver hair pulled back into a ponytail, a very slender framed man. The second person is a dragonborn uh with copper scales uh the dragonborn uh, has a pair of spectacles on uh and is also uh um, a male a man um a dude it's not a human it's not a man but you know what i mean um and uh they come in and they the elf looks at nathan and is like these are them and Nathan just says, yep. He's like, at this point, Nathan seems very nonchalant. He's, he's no longer serious. He's back to his, like, normal, like, passive self. You know, he's, he seems almost relieved. The the elf would nod, and he would look at you five. Um, he would wave a hand, and he would cast a spell. Um, all of you, you're not missing any health. If you are missing health, you gain it back, and all you all lose one exhaustion level. Hmm. As he waves thank his hand you. over you all, he's yeah, like, "Don't you. thank me. I just want answers from not tired people." Nathan told me, but as he is in the mentor position, his report can't be filed correctly. So, so long as you tell me exactly everything he just told me, there won't be any problems. And he gestures to open the floor. The dragonborn, um licks a talon and, and like a book appears and he's got the pad and he starts writing to write. We were in the Snallvale Forest on, mm -hmm. what was the, the set's name again? Mm -hmm. I don't remember the set's name out of character. Anyone else want to help her? Okay, what, to find what are we doing? Yeah, um, Tescos. Tescos, right? yeah. Terracost? We're, we're, cost. On, we're on to cost. cost. Yeah. We found something weird. We're in the Snellville Forest at the cost. Yes. And we uh hunting wolves for their pelts. And we encountered this white light orb. It was huge. And at first we thought it was moving. We found out that it wasn't. It's completely stationary and the facet was moving underneath of it. It seems to be moving southwards towards the edge. Dusty can probably tell you a bit more about this, but 
cast some spells on it to discover that it's some kind of abjuration it's, incarnate. It seems to be the pure essence of the abjuration magic as a spell, and it's also not moving. It's stationary in place. The facet was moving under it. It's what do you mention the facet was moving under it? The elf kind of gets this eyebrow, looks at Nathan. Nathan smiles and gives a thumbs up. <laughs> like, oh, Nathan, are your charges bullshitting me? Um, and and the, but neither the high elf of Dragon Morse anything. The high elf, he would say, is that all? Uh, no. When I touched it, I lost all emotions for a quick second. And when mm -hmm. uh, Daniel over there touched it. He instantly seemed to have an increased effect of gravity unless an imprint in the ground. You can probably still find mm. an imprint of his face if you want to make like a face mask for what's the equivalent of Halloween in this universe? Halloween. Uh, for a <laughs> Halloween mask, if you want. Uh, yeah, Dragonborn is writing down every word you're yeah, saying. And, oh, and also, like he was, well, I mean, he's still tired, but he was way more tired than us when we arrived. Yeah, like he yes. got like like it was drained of his body. And he was like super heavy. I mean, it looked like someone had put a giant cinder block on the back of his back and shoved him into the ground, and then it came off. It like when the orb moved away. Hmm. The effect seemed and to I... be semi-random of when you touch it. Before I mean, we only he touched was able it twice. To... <laughs> yeah, and before he was able to get up, uh, I tried to go help drag him away from it, but I just hmm. couldn't get near that orb. It just it was something felt wrong about it. Mm -hmm. And Dragonborn's, the high elf's looking at you all, and he's he's not looking directly at you all, he's more looking at nothing in space. He's definitely thinking really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, is that all? Is there anything else about this phenomenon? Uh, it's very bright. Like, mm -hmm. like imagine the light pure spell, light. but imagine light. if the light spell was ninth level. The wizard nod, or not the wizard. The high elf nods. Um, okay. That's and although yeah. it was moving, it seemed I say it was moving, but it's been established stationary. It was moving very slowly. But the cost yeah, slowly. slowly. I think that's more the first it's moving slowly. That uh, well, like I said, you know, I'm not... just talking in relative oh, terms. Oh, and it just and it seems to uh, didn't it bat my rapier away when I put it up to it. No, um, you turned away. No, yeah, and you failed. You, out of character, you failed, failed the constitution. The constitution. Yeah, okay. and when we like uh, uh, throwing like rocks and uh, you know yeah. like we should throw rocks at it. It doesn't just, seem to yeah. affect anything. It passes through trees harmlessly and rocks harmlessly. And when mm -hmm. we uh, we didn't, uh, but it did try to reject us as organic beings. We had to mm -hmm. like actually try to touch it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I sent a uh, fire we... spirit to touch it, and it dissipated. I lost my connection with it. Oh, can you resummon Soot? Yes, I can. Uh, he yeah, you would be able to summon it back perfectly normal. Well, yeah. it only lasts an hour, which is really tragic. Um, the High Elf would nod, listening, thinking. Um, he would ask... When... Actually, no better question. He he looks at each of you in your eyes, and then he like looks at Gwilrick. He's like, you're not affiliated with any houses, are you? Uh, no. I'm a bone are. dreamer. No. He nods. Good. I'm going to ask you six. Yeah. Looks at Nathan. Seven. He says very like snarky towards Nathan. And to keep what you found private for now as we research this further. Um, what you have brought to us is to be candid it's something that I personally had never heard of. And for me not to have heard of anything, that is at a level of rarity that I am impressed. Simply Maybe. for my understanding of context, uh, what is your position within the guild? Who are you? Ah, yes. My name is Merrick. I am a member of the Adventurers Guild out of Status only, I'm not really an adventurer. I am here as a representative of the Whistler College. Oh, I graduated from there. What'd you say? Is anyone going out to investigate it? They might I... still have a chance yes, of seeing it. Yes, we've already sent people to go yeah. into that direction, Nathan. 
I just Did said I graduated from Worcester College. Like, oh, I went there too. Due to the uniqueness of the situation, we are bending the rules of what mentors can do and the party has done. Um, like I said, I ask you six to not say anything, but due to your discovery, your silence is going to be technically bought, he says. And um, he is going to pull out the bag. He's going to six bags. They're, they're very small bags. You know, maybe only hold a handful of coins each. And he would, you know, gesture, and they would all float towards you. Okay. I got you with my trunk. Oh, wait, yeah. more new yeah. rings? No, not rings. There's coins in there. Oh. You feel it. It's, it's, it's very few <laughs> coins, you know, very, very few coins. Okay. Uh, Charles, am, Charles will just count in front of him, like, hmm? Oh, as you <laughs> open it, though, they're not gold coins. They're platinum coins. Oh. oh! More specifically, it's 10 platinum coins, a.k.a. 100 gold worth. Yes. Uh, 100 gold to split, right? No, each. Oh, shit. Each. Damn. <laughs> huh. Seeing your expressions, the elf kind of gets this, like, mm. I can Based, pay off the college like, debt. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I know I'm so beloved and given. <laughs> um, and he would say, as well, if any of you wish to join the Whistler College, this would stand as good rapport to join at the lowest of ranks. Mm-hmm. So if you wish to do so, you can always speak to the representative here at this guild, and we can get the paperwork signed off quite easily for you. Ooh. Uh, a question. The library's in the Whisper College, right? The library... Well, there's the library, which is in the Blue House. Oh, okay. The library is like... Every piece of knowledge ever is in is in the Blue House. Like, if, if it's public knowledge or not public knowledge, it's in the Blue House. Um, the Worcester College does have their own library. Um, as you can read, they deal with magical... Artifacts. I know, but like, uh, was matters. Gerald in the Blue House or the uh, that library? Uh, you would know because you are his friend. He is a member of the Blue House. Okay. Um, he's not part of any guild specifically. He's just a member of the Blue House. Gotcha. Yep. Um, Nathan has this. You know, once he sees your faces, also he's like, "Yeah, I'm a good mentor." <sighs> <laughs> yeah, kind of <laughs> attitude about it. He doesn't say it, but he's got that aura. Respect, um, like, I, I respect not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, the the wizard would be like, um, thank you for your duties as adventurous, and unfortunately, this doesn't classify as a mission. Otherwise, I would be putting in for you to rank up to bronze. Uh, but Nathan says here, you guys need maybe one or two more outings in different mm. areas other than the cost, he says, which unfortunately I have to agree with. You need to widen your area of expertise to other than one facet. Who knows? Maybe you'll find another magical web. I kind of <laughs> hope not. He, he kind of <laughs> chuckles as if like that's oh, never going to happen. Doing, but... That'd be great, oh, though. God, what if there's an orb for each... What, guys, what if there's an orb for each magic school? Ah, um, well, like, if you find the necromancy one, you can probably talk to your ancestors. Okay, seriously, I mean, stop making guesses about my traditions. You're really offending me here. Oh, sorry. I mean, he does have a point. Maybe if we if we found, like, let's say, an evocation or divination uh, magical anomaly, it could be uh, meaning bad things. That's why I hope we don't encounter another one. Yes. I'll, I'll leave the says, If more than one exists, I, for a fact, don't know it, and I will tell you that truthfully. Have a nice day, he says, and he walks out, and his little yes. copper dragonborn closes the, the book and gives, like, a lower half bow and, like, follows after him. Yes. We After the door closed, Nathan's like, eh? Who am I? Am I the best mentor ever or not? What's 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 going on here, guys? Uh, I got you fucking like, paid. Okay. I will clap him on the back and be like, "This has been very productive." Yeah. yeah speaking, this is not including rewards for your mushrooms and, and, and for your coats. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was about to, yeah. I was about to ask, have we yeah, been paid for the other? No, ones? you guys haven't turned no, those in yet. We haven't come in. Okay. Well, yes. are you allowed to? Yeah. I asked Nathan, are you allowed to go drinking with us? 
I am. Okay, Good. then let's go. Let's all. How about we keep all this money, but use the wolf pelts to all buy rounds? Nate is like. Mushrooms. Well, man, yeah, let's see what the uh, other one is. Fenix just goes, How many rounds are you planning on drinking with that much money? Four pets are 10 gods, so. At least 40. What about the tingle deeds? Yeah. Let's, let's go get. Let, yeah, let's get paid. And I'm. Like, if I'm you guys aren't exhausted get... anymore, you guys just feel like you, get, you just did a long rest. Yeah. So, um, okay. even, even you, Daniel, uh, or, yeah, Daniel, you, you are good as well. Um, not as good, but, like, you're not exhausted anymore. Um, okay. oh, you're still yeah. sore. Herbs and wolf <laughs> okay. pelts. Okay, ten so gold will be given for wolf pelts, mm -hmm. and twenty GP per person at for the herbal gathering. No, uh, it's uh, per mushroom. Mm -hmm. You get to pick a reward Seven. of twenty gold pieces or a vial of poison that's highly effective against plant-based creatures. Uh, I believe you guys got um, how many herbs again? Seven. We got seven. seven. Yes. We got quite a few. So, how do you guys wish to uh, break this up? Well, there's seven of us, right? There's six of you. Oh, why don't we put the last uh, 20 in, in a supply mode? I got the math, got it. I got my calculator. So we got 20 times 7, plus we had 40 from the... from the, um, yeah. well, it's, it's, it's 180. Five, it's 180. Six, like 180, 30. so we get 30 each. Yeah, 30 gold pieces each. So you guys are not getting the poison. You guys are just going cash in all for gold. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. Okay, actually, no, poison. I'll get the poison. All right, you're going to forfeit your uh, 20 gold yeah. for, for the poison. Okay. Uh, I will type out the poison. Um, yeah. Keeping this in case we need it later. So, I mean, depending on how much does he get the well. extra gold? Yeah. Cool. Dusty gets 10 and a poison, and we all get 30. Nice. Neat. There you go. I got the weave oh, killer. Yeah. How much, uh, how much does oh, the silver killer. equal in gold again? The platinum. The platinum? Uh, it, yeah. So you got ten platinum coins, which is a hundred gold. It's a, it's okay. a, yeah. It, everything's a ten to one ratio, gotcha. with the exception gotcha. of electrum. But no, electrum uses. doesn't. Electrum is not. Uh, electrum, electrum coins are not canned in this world. Electrum metal is. Yeah, you electrum coins are too annoying to deal with. Yeah, that's it's. They're a fun little gimmick, but no. Um. Letter oh, delivery yeah. has been updated, and there's no longer the, yeah, yeah. Um, the board is updated. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm looking at. So, like, I think elect ele would Electrum be like the equivalent of Bitcoin in this? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because Electrum coins doesn't exist, and yeah, so it's, yes. it's, just, it's just copper, yeah. silver, like, gold. It exists, but only for you know shady dealings. Yeah. And then anything after platinum is just straight gems and art pieces at that point. So. Mm. Uh, uh, that's not personally i don't want to look at the work at the job board right now i am Ooh. in favor of getting shit faced hey yeah okay. remember oh, the it's like i know a place you know to it takes get Gwilrick shit face that's I why think... we brought the plant thing the, um... i'm i don't need that to get drunk i mean granted i am used to stronger stuff than you probably have here but whatever well aren't you used to sh wait oh wait that's dwarf i'm sorry <laughs> My people brew stuff. We I know, but dwarves our... brew dwarves brew with mushrooms. Absolutely. Damn, just a question. Um, I yeah. don't know if this is something I have to establish, but uh, what kind of things would be fermentable on the uh, on my home facet? Um, yours was more of like a savanna, so um, there would be mushrooms there. Uh, maybe some types of barley, more more like hops and things like that. I'm going to look up um, African alcohol real quick. There wouldn't be anything like <laughs> vodka level. It would be like ales and beers. And probably you things flavored with nuts. Mm -hmm. you know? mm. So it wouldn't be strong alcohol there. It would be more alcohol for the, t for the taste. Maybe a little bit of for a head buzz. Exactly. For the experience. Exactly. Oh, Maybe some like rituals with it as well. Fenix is going to pat Willrick on the shoulder and just be like, I'm going to introduce you to absinthe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. God. Oh, yeah. So, um, no. Africa I mean, had bad, various but... types of wine due to fruits. Hmm. Um, so, Nathan has a place. He, if you, He's like, if you guys are buying, I uh, know a place. Ooh. Good. Let's go. Yeah. So, he's, so, you guys are on the convergence, right? Yeah. And yep. he's going to lead you guys to the pillar. 
It's it's off a convergence, he says. Let's go. Mm. All right. Uh, so you guys will go through the portal. Um, you guys will go to a facet that's not listed anywhere on your publicly known facets. Um, oh, awesome. Adventure. You would appear on what can only be described as maybe a football field-sized facet with a 10-story tall building on it. Where are we? He says, welcome to the stairway to heaven. <laughs> I prefer the highway to hell, personally. Is, do we pass a lady who's sure that all that glitters is gold? <sighs> you pass several <laughs> types of people. Um, and the architecture of this place is... Um, how would I describe it? Because <laughs> I never had a thought about this before. Um, it would be... Not Asian, but more um, like Egyptian, Middle Eastern. Mm. So, yeah. A lot of open windows, uh, very, yeah. not blocky. Yeah, like but more, modern though. Egyptian, not ancient Egyptian. Yeah, exactly. A mm. um, okay. lot of... Lot of um, tapestries and like just of general colors uh and it's a various different colors as it goes up this place and this place is busy there's a lot of people going in and out um and what can only be described as what happens is something that can only be told while drinking it is a vegas type experience i'm guessing <laughs> for mm. you guys <laughs> for drinking um i'll let you guys come up with your own stories of what happens um if you guys want to make some rolls and see how shit face you get, that's perfectly fine. Yes. Uh, how much money are we spending here tonight? Uh, let, let's let's get that deducted from your from your balances real quick. Well, how much Charlie, does? Charlie well, ask for the wine wine, uh, wine menu and pick the uh, <laughs> more expensive. Yeah, how much how much do bottles of wine cost? Um, well, bottles start at five gold, and you would uh, know that is like middle upper prices. Maybe not the most expensive. Uh... Yeah, mo well, so, and this is just for the non-magical drinks, by the way, I should mention. <laughs> magical drinks? Oh, they have magical drinks. They do. Um, Nathan, Nathan, when he hears about the magical drinks, he's like, oh, well, every beer as a baseline has a healing potion in it as well. Oh. It is brewed with healing potions. I, I mean, that's so smart. I think I'll stick to wine. I don't. I've never had beer. I don't like the sound of it personally. If you want uh, wine, are you looking for wine for taste, or are you looking for wine because you just don't like the taste of alcohol and you still want to get shit faced? I think I spoke too soon when I said shit faced because you know I didn't know the al alcohols of my home facet. I would be going for wine that tastes decently, but is you know at the lower price range. Mm -hmm. I'm just pasting the um the core pricing. rules for the drinks. Are these what are we going with these? So that's for like the baseline drinks, yeah. And like I said, the fine bottle is like five to ten gold is like the starting prices for the for the nicer stuff. Yeah. I will Ooh. buy I will I'm willing to buy three bottles of wine, intending to drink two myself. Of the fine ones or for mm. the of the baseline, like five gold each, you know. Okay, like, yeah, I, okay. I, I recognize I'm getting the cheap stuff, but I'm okay with that as long as it tastes. Decent. It's not. It's not cheap wine. This is definitely like, even for five gold, you feel like, especially you, Charles, with your exquisite taste of wines. You're like, even for five gold, this is some pretty decent wine. Mm -hmm. Like you would, you think a, a bottle of, of the five gold stuff, like where you usually go, would be like seven, eight gold. But yeah, I intend Ooh. to drink two bottles so. of wine myself. The third bottle is either to share with others who want it mm -hmm. or to keep for later. Yeah. Um, as you guys are here, I do want to mention this. You guys can definitely tell this is an invite-only place. Oh. And a what-only place? Uh, invite-only, and Nathan brought you here. Because, oh, so, nice. Charles, you never heard of this place. I would say that much. Ooh. Even if, even with your multiple <laughs> resources. Contacts, you, yeah. You've heard whispers of this place, but you didn't really know what it was until just now. Mm. So this is like, yeah. Are there any games are being played? played? Uh, oh, there yeah. are games, both of the f actual actual games kind and the drinking game kind. Um, and like I, I said, there are multiple it. floors, so um, each floor has a theme of both the drinks and the games and just general atmosphere. One of the floors has to be a brothel. Just. 
Yeah, two. <laughs> or can you make it's a PG like, thirteen plus here? <laughs> so I can either confirm or deny. Like it, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna run it on there. I'll let you you know, it's just a Do these magical drinks have effects? Um, for the higher price ones, yes, they do. What do they do? Uh, what what what, what price range? Are you? Just give me just give me a number, and I'll pull up my guide here. What are you looking at? I have no clue because I'm terrified <laughs> of how expensive these are gonna be. Um, for the lowest priced one, <laughs> starts at twenty gold, and Damn. yeah, and what these do, uh, and they are actual buffs like bonuses to strength, wisdom, constitution, things like that. And they last for 24 hours. Um, stats, things, skills, things like that. But you're also drunk, so it kind of like negates it. <laughs> yeah. Dusty is not drinking. Um, yeah, no, I'm just going to go for drink. ale, probably. Yeah, and usually like, for usual ale, yeah. And probably we'll do a few drinking games and whatnot, because Phoenix yeah. is... Every drink you drink out. is just taste perfectly. Um yeah. And like I said, all the ales and beers have healing potions in them. So if you get into a bar fight, you just drink a, a, a some beer and you're ready to go round two. <laughs> and now you're so, more drunk. <laughs> so I'm, 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 about, I'm inclined to roll a constitution save because here's the thing. Although I bought bottles, I'm not drinking glasses. I am holding the bottle in a trunk. A, yeah, in my just trunk. guzzling, yeah. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not guzzling, but I'm treating the bottles as mm -hmm. normal-sized people treat glasses. You know, it's not how much, but yeah. Well, yeah. How much ale does two gold get me? Uh, oh, looking shit. at the guide, um, twenty ales, gallons. Yeah, you can get ten 20 gallons. gallons. Oh, that's it's ten gallons yeah. for one gold. Um, so yeah, you can buy rounds for like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll play some drinking games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we don't have to worry about any rolls, really. A casino or something. I would go there. Fenix and Daniel are definitely going to face off in a drinking game. Yeah. Oh, this wine's got a decent bouquet to Already, it. Uh, yeah. Already you guys done. have an amazing night. Um, Dusty, even if you don't drink, you still have an amazing night. There yeah. is um, definitely like a book, not like a books club, but there's definitely like an area for people who don't like drinking the alcoholic stuff. They're just there to have a, a good time still, regardless. Oh, I was just here for blackmail. Um, I mean, that <laughs> works too. Um, like is is there like a casino um, ale, uh, casino part? Is there a what? Uh, like um, casino uh, st um, part of the um, building? Yeah, that was my question. Is there a casino? Oh, yeah. Uh, there is yes, but um, we're just gonna throw you, you net even out of it because I don't want to waste time with the rules. <laughs> that like is that. the VIP oh, of yeah. the VIP place. <laughs> I was I was I was in some bar fights and then Oh yeah, know. absolutely. You were in bar fights and, and everything here is all in good fun. It's not actual like Yeah. That's you're here to get to, to actual like, like be like, angry and like, it's like drink your sorrows away. Yeah, we'll get that's kicked probably. out and meet up at Fantasy mm -hmm. Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> One point um when Phoenix uh, when Caius is like beat up from a fight, Phoenix is gonna go over to him and start healing him with fire and then just like say to him I lied uh, and in a drunken state. Just, I lied to you. We do know each other. <laughs> and then just go back hey. to me. And, 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 hey. I, I, and I'm not going to remember that because I was too drunk. Okay. Oh, actually, while <laughs> they're drunk, <laughs> while they're drunk, I'm going to go out to Phoenix. So have you picked out a name yet? Not. Do you have suggestions? I'm thinking something to do with fire. Uh, let's see. Soot, Ember, Flint... Fuegos, Agony. I sneeze and it sounds like head block. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know a lot of different words for fire. That's that is for fact. I mean, when I was picking my name, I went through so many options. Okay, I got Flint, Agony, Powder, Set, Ember, Ash, Fuegos, Arson, and Dave. I mean, you're <laughs> at a bar. Is there any? You could call it Fireball. <laughs> I feel like that'd be confusing if she calls fire if they call if he calls fireball. It's like okay, can I, you yeah. imagine yeah. she says I summon fireball. You know what people's reaction is going to be yeah. <laughs> instead of a, it's just a cute little animal. Uh, calls out fireball and this tiny little fox appears like hi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be funny like once you get high level because it's a fire spirit and they can't take fire damage. You send it mm -hmm. into combat riding on a fireball. Iconic. I wish you could do that, but I don't think that's how Fireball works in the ED. I think it's like, if I remember correctly, it's yeah. a dot that explodes. 
Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's not a traveling ball fire. It's just like basically laser pointer, point of impact for the laser. It's Ooh. more of a grenade, yeah. You should yeah. name it something like really intimidating. Like Blaze the Infernal God of Destruction. So when it comes out and it's just a fox, people are like, What? <laughs> Daniel suggesting this in, in character? Yeah, we're brought oh, yeah, together. Yeah, like he's drunk. He'll just say whatever's coming like, to his like mind. Like he right? whispered his mind. Like we're sitting in a row. Like I'm sitting on your left. He's sitting on your right. And he's like passing out and coming back up because he's drunk as shit. The, and meanwhile, because I rolled a freaking 20. Okay, guys. Okay, there's just a bunch of shit-faced adventurers all staring very seriously at this adorable little fox sitting at the Absolutely. table. Absolutely. That's yes. exactly what's happening. <laughs> Oh, even Nathan's shit. involved at this point. Like, Does Dream the fox have a drink with a bending straw? Yeah, should be that name. <laughs> they do cater to summon it pets, so just letting you know. Yeah, okay, I, and he's like drinking out of a little glass everything. with a bendy straw. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I got a 24 on the cod save, so I'm not... I I probably feel a little good, but I'm not even really tipsy Oh yeah, should make one too. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, I'm just sitting there casually drinking the wine and just taking this in, you know? Okay, I need to see or, like a trick or, or shot with my bow and arrow. He's, he's drawing, but he's okay. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm gonna I'm a roll too. <clears throat> oh, not bad. Okay. My DM always rules after t- after a drink. Once you hit the second, you have all your con saves at disadvantage. Because let's be honest, <laughs> more or less, yeah. Hey, if that's all you mm-hmm. want to do, it I'll roll another one. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Because I am having two bottles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm having gallons. Okay, I'm starting to oh, feel yeah. it at the uh, second. Oh uh, yeah, you're drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. You guys have a wonderful night of uh, celebrating your victory after, you know, you guys just traveled for like over 24 hours. <laughs> and now you're partying. It's it's fantastic. Um, Is there any chance that I could keep some of the ale? Like, is it bottled yeah. or is it all like in pitchers? Uh, you, you, you can order to go. Like, could I say, because I don't think I'd be able to finish two golds worth like oh absolutely liver. not no you wouldn't yeah mm-hmm. so how much would um, you say i'd have and would they count as healing potions uh n- so now we're getting the territory of like where we're fun and uh uh <laughs> 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 mechanisms are uh, they're not gonna let you take the take any of the magical stuff out mm. so like um, even though it's brutal, beer, you could. what's that like the ale, like it doesn't come already in the ale. The, the so so it does, but you're not. They're not going to let you take take it out and like because they're afraid they're going to resell it and stuff like that. That's their mm-hmm. reasoning. <laughs> oh, so I can't take <laughs> the wine. The with me. I was because like yeah, I know basic I wine. The magic stuff you ring. cannot take out. Any of the basic stuff you are able to take out. Okay. So <laughs> if you just want to get some ale to go, like you want to get like a I would put it in like my a... ring. Like I would just have it like you, you know, absolutely can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. That's so where I have like all my rations in, and stuff. Come in, yeah. like buy buy cheaper bottle of wines and just go out and resell them again for more expensive for their like mm-hmm. normal price. <laughs> That's fraud. Um <laughs> <It is>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Charles has no new plan to get rich. <laughs> He's like, guys, I got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> but yeah, so you guys have, like I said, you guys have a wonderful night uh, celebrating. Nathan's there with nice. you, trying to help you guess names. Uh, he is, uh, for some weird reason, he is all down for the. Um, the name Flint, even though it doesn't fit at all. He's drunk. Um, and you guys enjoy a wonderful night together. Mm-hmm. You wake up with no hangovers. That's the best. Nice. Oh. The dream. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever experienced a hangover, so that wouldn't be weird to me. Fair enough. Um, it is morning of the next day. I'm- um, you guys are, you know, a few silvers, maybe a gold or three um, poor from your night out. Um, you know, but you all have memories to share together. 
Just Definitely. just curious, did anybody uh, partake when I offered to share that third bottle of wine? Oh, definitely. Oh. Charles, on, Charles only drinks one glass, you know? Like, the, but the one liter's glass that you Oh, Nathan would have done shots with you guys, by the way. He, he would have bought rounds of shots, I should mention. Mm. Fuck yeah. Um, Fenix just accepted any free drinks he could get. Like, yeah, like the, I mean, um, that's all. Oh, 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 I get forgot to make this really confused. Right house Rewinding just a little bit here, because I forgot there's one drink Nathan wants to buy for you guys. It's called the Rainbow Shot. Um. Uh, there is no save for this because you're drinking it willingly. Um, you get to breathe rainbow fire for a minute as when you burp. <laughs> Fenix is ecstatic. Yep. <laughs> I've, I've rainbow shot. I had that in my notes, so yeah. So, uh, I, but yeah. So you wake up, no hangovers, things like that. Uh, um, it is a great night of partying and things like that. Good music uh, choices, by the way, uh, Chris. Yep. Uh, it out is the next day. Question? Uh, wait, what would you say? Out of character question, could we yep. come back to the facet, or is it only like... Yes, like you, yeah, said, you guys only? now are able to come here whatever you okay. want to. Okay, awesome, cool. Because it's not on yep. the generalist, so I wanted to know if like we could still choose to... I thought this. that was appropriate yeah, theme for the um, bar. <sighs> yeah, I'm actually adding it to your list right now. <laughs> um, awesome, sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to stop recording there then. Oh no, we're. I mean, we still got an hour. Yeah, oh, you're I was right. Gonna... I'm... Mm. I like Unless that. people need to get going. No, no I was gonna no. um, urge for goblin attackers. Yeah. That's our next mission. <laughs> it just felt like a good stopping point. It is, but I mean, yeah. We still got an hour uh, session time. Why not? True. So I mean, we can at the very least decide what we're gonna do next job wise. Yes. I'm resisting the urge to name my my fire spirit Shrub. Shrub. <laughs> Shrub. So, um, you guys have your list of um, missions to choose from. It is updated. There are new ones. There are some that you guys wanted to do. Now they're gone. There is one that's been updated. Yeah. Some of the higher um, ranking ones are, are, are changed out and stuff. Um, yeah, we can't do those. We no, we only do that. iron and bronze. I mean, we can try. Letter delivery. I vote letter delivery. It got better. It got better. I'm in favor of uh, I'm in favor of the goblin attackers one actually. That's that's something we could absolutely do, and it They're would be a good use of our time. Okay. Yes. So we're going to set Greek. Well. Phoenix will say petulantly, doesn't pay much. Uh, I mean, mm. 10 gold each or no more than 60 gold? Yeah, there are six of us, so that would be 60 gold, 10 each. Oh, we're out of the bar now. I mean, it's not much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, it's not much, but there are people being endangered by goblins. Yes, yes, of course. Those are kind of the two options. Yeah. They're on different facets, though, so... Mm, yeah, that's the problem. I'm um, taking yeah. these steel missions if... Uh, uh, something is on the same... Uh... But if letter delivery is still here by the time we finish that, I strongly mm -hmm. vote we take it right then and there. Well, okay. people are dying doing the letter delivery, so it does sound dangerous. All the more interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with whatever. You all pick. I vote letters. I'm... I mean, we can do goblins. the goblins. It's a quick and uh, likely. Uh... But the goblins. Yeah, I'll do yeah, goblins. I mean, probably, but... probably be like here, yeah, rescue any uh, block uh, any current attack and uh, like maybe roid uh, goblin then. I vote for goblins as well, but for the next one, letter. Well, that's yeah. going to depend on what's on the board when we get yeah, back. Yeah, the letter. What did Charles here. vote? Uh, goblin. All right, let's go goblins then. Go, go goblins. Righteous. We'll grab the notice and head to the front desk. Wonderful. We're going to slay these goblins. Yes. Um, 
cool. You guys are going to Black Snow. We're going up Sun um, Creek. Yep. Bonus right. reward, a warm meal from my the farmer's wife. That's the best part. <laughs> so wholesome. Hey. hey. Whatever, get Avengers out there to help get revenge on these goblins. Uh, so you guys ready to see your second facet ever? It's crazy. I was realizing that earlier today. I'm like, these guys have only been to the cost. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, do, do we leave I'm now so or do we sad. have like some time uh, before leaving? I'm so sad I didn't get to talk to the druid. I wanted to learn what she was going to teach you guys, me. So, so there is such thing as downtime that will happen over time. Um, yeah. There'll be sessions where, you know, maybe like two people are missing. We'll just make it like a downtime session. Um, so yeah, you can always you can go have the ability to go back. Um, yeah, because I would like to like spend some money and do some stuff before we. Uh... I w I want to go back to Takas because, well, out of character, the there's like the potential rift where the druids are. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Black Snow, everyone. Mm. Uh, as you go through um, the pillar, uh, where Takas was a warm the area uh black snow is a little on the colder side um more like you know early fall type deal um a little windy um and in the city uh it's not covered in soot or anything like that um but the the air has this sulfur smell into immediately once you enter the area oh um, damn it that sucks yep it does have a raunchy stench to it I, um, my trunk is tucked inside my shirt. Yeah. Um, Blackheart. Yeah. Oh, Fennec's so, just laughed and is unaffected as his comrades all react. Yeah. So, uh, Blackheart is a bustling um, city. There are a lot of carts full of um, food and veggies and stuff because uh, due to the split rich soil um plants here grow phenomenally um so there's a lot of vineyards here there's a lot of um high valued uh farms here so as well i don't as know how anyone things. could could like could enjoy that food and drink with that scent in the air <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you see most people are bothered by it but you but people you assume who live here don't seem bothered by it as they're not reacting to the na the nasty smell as if they're used to it uh yeah, speaking of which of people uh what kind of people who live here um i forgot let me open my notes so i can tell you about that and so used mm -hmm. to cost i haven't checked my black snow notes in a hot minute um do 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 you should have taken the freaking forage for mushrooms again yeah no right because <laughs> you're going back ah right so um not surprisingly at all, there are um, fire and earth Ganazi here, um, as well as Goliath. Those Goliath! Are the three primary races here. So, um, uh, finally, around people who are almost as tall as I am. Oh, though they are the same size as you. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goliath. The difference would be is they're feet tall. Yeah. So. The, the difference would be Goliaths aren't as wide as me, necessarily. No, definitely not. Especially with your ears and everything. Um, Fenix will see other fire ganassi and kind of be like, huh. Are you from here? <laughs> no, I'm not. Hmm. So. You thought about lying for a minute also there. Also, a uh, perpetual cloud in the sky here, as it is never truly daytime here. It's just bright and dark. There is no light. It's none of it. So. Oof. Oh, God, it's Portland. So, um, you oh, notice there's, there's, there's you know, other Which races Portland? here as well, uh, other than just those main three. Um, a, a large mixture of races who all a lot of people are pale here as well so i wonder why mm -hmm. so yeah uh so what would you advise like to... oh i should also mention a uh, black heart has a um glass majoring is, is the major glass hub as well due to all the soot he can make glass out of it so neat cool that's pretty sweet mm -hmm. all right um 
Let's head to Soot Creek, I believe. All right. Head on there. It's a two-day trip, it looks like, so. Mm. Yeah, I checked. At least if you just follow the trail. I'm in favor of getting this done really. as quickly as possible. Yeah, one, yeah, two days. The best one that we deal with the issue quickly. I mean, if I'd known about the smell of this place, that might have factored into my dis my adamance to come here. I mean, <laughs> I think for the next missions, we can, like, you know, <laughs> look a bit more into what facet uh, we would go, like, what, uh, whatever is, there is. I, I mean, think. I'll still do it, but uh, what I mentioned about my irritability before, I'm going to have another factor in that now. Yes, but, you know, I mean, if we go to a facet where it's 40 degrees outside and to one where it's minus 10, I mean, we may need some appropriate clothing, you know? <laughs> no. All right. So I like this movie we, here, so we, are we taking the road or are we going straight there? I mean it, we should go along the yeah. road because it'll be easier going. Yep. Take the well, road. It would take you two days to get there. Um we are going to like hand wave the sleeping because you guys are sleeping on the main road. Yep. Um and you guys aren't gonna be in any dangerous areas. So uh because you're gonna be probably you're gonna be sleeping um near this mountain right here, which is a very common pit stop for most people. I so, imagine that there are other people camping nearby. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You, can we just see like the last volcano? Time, uh, you can see the volcano, but it is not active. It is it is very much dormant here. Can I insight check the DM? <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, <laughs> I insight check God <laughs> to see if the volcano <laughs> dormant. You, you, you realize he is both lying and telling the truth at the same time. It is up to his own amusement to determine whether or not he's lying. He works in mysterious <laughs> ways. I have this strange feeling the volcano's name is Schrodinger. <laughs> Real quick, changing the volcano's name. Um, <laughs> Schrodinger's volcano. Uh, you ever parry uh, a volcano? It is both active and not active at the same time. Um, the volcano yeah. counterspells your opinion. The white orb returns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was but from the volcano the whole time. The, white orb. the volcano collapsed the orbs. For now on, you guys just start causing problems. I'm gonna have the white orb disappear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! It's gonna suddenly judge us. It's gonna be like God and Prince of Egypt. Exactly. Um. So yeah, it takes you two days to get there. It is evening time when you get to Soot Creek. Um. And it is the path. Once you get off the main path, um, you start going this way. Uh, the road is very much less traveled here. Um, and you guys pass like by one or two smaller farms. Um, definitely not the fancy ones that are talked about here or matches the, the quality of food you saw in Blackheart. Um, but. Uh, you guys arrive at Soot Creek. It is a very small town. You're guessing no more than 100, 200 people live here. Um, smaller than the one you guys were at back at Stephen. Um, at a glance, you guys can see a couple interesting places. Um, you see a tower made of black stone. Um, you can see what is very much a... Maybe probably a blacksmith, maybe more like someone who just repairs tools type area with a, um, an anvil sitting outside. Um, you would see um, what seems to be a chapel and what also seems to be like a small little tavern, more more like a kitchenette, than, or like a, a, um, a communal eating place than a tavern. And again, it's night. It's 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 nighttime here, and like here, night comes early due to the constant, uh, ever sitting cloud of soot that surrounds this place. Um, blacksmith open. What did they? Is the blacksmith open? Uh, it is evening. You don't see a fire on it in it at all. Yeah. Mm. It's nighttime, it, or a, more. I should say it is nighttime. Even, even like your biological clocks say it's more like dinner time. It is nighttime. So, 
All right. I guess we uh, should find a place to rest tonight. Well, mm. uh, you would know you're supposed to report into the mayor here, by the way. I should mention that. Okay. Or not really mayor, more like town leader. <laughs> town elder, whatever. Yeah. Homeowner mm. association. Should we go check in with the leader first, then? Look. Yeah, let's go do that yeah, first. Let's, uh, okay. let's go there. <clears throat> um, okay, it's very it. obvious the only two-story building other than the tower is probably where he is at. All right, we will head there and uh, give a knock on the door. So, um, it is a fairly quaint-sized two-story home. Um, you knock on the door, and a person carrying a candle light opens the door. Uh, you will see a middle-aged man open the door, and he looks at you all. He's like, oh, you're here about the goblins, aren't you all? Yes, we're here from the game. Yes, yes, good sir. Oh, That's correct. Cool, fantastic um he like looks he's like it's really late um he, he like looks outside looks left and right he's like three houses down it's empty um you guys can just stay there for the night and i'll talk to you guys in the morning oh that's wonderful thank you so much yeah um he, he just nods he's like have a nice night i'll talk to you guys in the morning um uh, Muriel's gonna be making breakfast, so you guys, I'm, I'm sure she's fine giving you guys free food as well. And what's uh, your name, sir? Muriel? Oh, uh, I am, I am, uh, Garland. Okay. Yeah. And who this, uh, Muriel is? What is, what is Muriel? What? Uh, this, this the woman you said who would make us food. Who is she? Uh, she's the farmer's wife. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, so Garland's not the farmer. No, uh, Garland is the mayor, or oh, mayor, uh, the, yeah. the, the, the leader of the town. The guy in charge. Uh, he is human, I will I will say that much. Um, mm. Okay, well, let's go meet this right. Muriel person. Well, no, no we let's, go, go, uh, let's no. go to the house we were directed to and leave this uh, okay. leave this man to his night's rest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought the I house was the, the, the farmer's house. No, they pointed you to an empty house to say sleep the night. Oh, okay. Because yeah. you guys are here. So, yeah, we, sl we sleep there, and in the morning we go back to the mayor, and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, uh... So uh, the house is very small. Um, it doesn't really have bedrooms. It's it's an open floor plan. But all six of you are able, or six, seven of you are able to fit into it. Maybe personal space is a little being is, is kind of being invaded, especially with an elephant in the room. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but you're able to like find your own little spots and like snuggle up. It's it. It's it seems this place has been this room has been empty for a while. Um, dust and soot cover the entire floor. Um, it's not very it's not sealed at all. It's not a sealed house. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you're, you're the, the, uh, yeah. Gwilurk is sneezing a lot. Um, you guys get a night's rest ish. It's not a very comfortable rest. It'd be sleeping outside, but it also isn't you know. Like the night you had last night. <laughs> yeah. Um, being in your own place. Could I um, fashion that health potion out of the materials I got during this long rest? You can, yes. That was your yeah. last set of materials, right? I only bought enough for one for now. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yep, you're able um, to fashion a uh, potion. Awesome. And then I'm going to also fashion a small bundle of, like, fragrant herbs. And put it on a string so that, um, and give it to Gwilric to, to have around his neck or what's, or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're a druid. You have some random bits I have a druid of and I have an herbalism kit, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you have some flowers. That is most appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, everything still smells like sulfur, but it's slightly muted by this fragrant smell of flowers. It's like, you know, you take Febreze, you straight over your trash can, you still smell the trash, but it also smells like Febreze. It's, yeah, it's not so much to, uh, you know, provide the scent of flowers instead, as to cancel out the smell of yeah. fart in the air. Yeah, uh, a rotten egg. Um, it is morning, um, as morning can be on black snow. It's just gray and depressing and things like that. Um... <laughs> Which makes you wonder how the plants are grown here, because there is no sunlight. So. 
Uh, it's morning. What do you guys do? The mayor. Yep. Yeah, go you back go back to the, to the uh, mayor's house. He seems to be waiting on you all. Um, he's not dressed in night clothes. He's dressed more in like, um, you know, a, a tunic, a nice pair of pants. Um, so he's like, oh, good. Yes, come on. We'll go talk to the farmer. I'll, I'll, he'll tell you his, his story. Uh, and he'll lead you all to the chapel. All right. Yes. So. And what was the farmer's name again? Uh, the farmer's name is... I don't think I actually said it, but let me look it up right here. Um, do, 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 do. Jarek. Have you seen the, the meme where it's like every single time I I don't have a name for someone, I call them Jarek, and it's got to the point where there's a Jarek in every campaign I play in? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the farmer is a fire ganazi, and his name is... Nugget. There it is. Alright. Like a nugget. gold nugget? You know? Nugget. Yeah, nugget with a hard My end. Name is nugget. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so inside the chapel, um, very quaint and small, uh, you would see there's an earth ganazi, uh, tending to a fire ganazi. So, okay. uh, the, fi the earth ganazi is feminine, uh, wearing, um, a dress of some sort. Um, the fire ganazi is, um, in, in bed with bandages looking pretty, not, not on, on death's edge, but like, you know. Went through some shit. Hmm. Medicine check to determine how he's doing? Yeah, give me a medicine check. Yay! Uh, he's hurt. <laughs> he is out cheese and boo-boos. Alright. Um, I do want to mention on a wall... You see a holy symbol, and uh, I'm trying to find my notes on that, what it looks like. Um, it would be in the shape of a mountain with a green outline. So, uh, Gwilrick, uh, unfortunately, you do not know what it is. So, you get the idea that it has something to do with an earth god, though. I've probably seen similar maybe, symbology maybe with I've... whatever interactions with earth plain people I might have seen before. Mm -hmm. Do I recognize it? Mm -hmm. You want to give Wait. me a religion check? Religion? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I'm not... I'm and before you ask uh, Ben, no, you do not recognize it immediately. Okay, cool. Uh, Phoenix, uh, it is it is a holy symbol. It's it's, it's holy, all right? Yep. <laughs> yep, that symbol, um, definitely holy. Yep. Um, yeah. That would be a god. Yep. Uh, ben, just let you know, uh, your patron's not a god. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, just, just, to, yeah. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> yes, the farmer sees you all walk in, and he's like, fuck yeah, go fucking kill those goblins. I want their yeah. penises on my table. I don't um, actually want that. The, the head yeah, would be that... enough, I think, you'd say. They almost killed me. Oh, I want I to. Yes, yeah. Torture. Yeah, no, you see, much. you're still here. It's proof that you're, you're probably not as problem as we think. Can well, you tell us what happened exactly. Yeah. Well, I was coming back from Blackheart, doing some shopping there. And these goblins, pack of them, just came out of nowhere, popped out of the soot, like the, the pieces of shit they are, and attacked <laughs> me, left me for dead. Took my took my horse, took my bags. I thought I was going to die, but he looks at the holy symbol, but by the graciousness of Geb, I was able to crawl my way back here, and and I've been in this fucking bed ever since. The farm's being untended to. It's just horrible. And where where did they attack you? And it was, did you see? Up the road, is, maybe not even an hour out. No, did you see uh, which direction he, they went after they left you for dead? I don't know. I was dying no, on the ground. He wasn't conscious. I'm, I'm sorry uh, about that. I'm just—we're just trying to gather information yeah. so we can when, better when tell the, where to go. 
How many days did the attack um, happen, good sir? Uh, the the mayor says five. I, the attack happened. Uh, he like counts uh, four, maybe five days ago at most. Mm. I put the request in immediately as soon as he came back. Um, yes, yes, we don't course, have anyone here who can fight off of goblins. I mean, we're just a little small farming village. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, I think the best thing we can do is to you know, go back to uh, the place where you were attacked and uh, maybe uh, track them down. It's four or five days. It's we should probably still have some. Uh... Maybe long gone from that ambush point. Yeah, but if his... yes, maybe maybe we can you know find some tracks and. Uh... If um... his farm's been abandoned at that time, it's more likely that they've ransacked the place. I'm sorry to bring up that possibility, sir, but we might have more luck checking that out, and there mm. might be fresher tracks there. Check it out. Where would you say again? It's hard to hear you. You're now talking like this. <laughs> I'm suggesting that. The goblins may not be at that ambush point anymore, but they may have ransacked his farm if it's been abandoned, you know. Yeah. Uh, Nugget says, no, no, no one, they haven't been there yet. Mirio's no, been I, there. I was thinking we go back to the ambush point and see, uh, try to, uh, you know, find some tracks uh, that may lead us to, you know. If my car hasn't was... been taken, it should still be on the side of the road. I'm All right, then, if that's the lead we've got. Yeah, I mean, because we don't have anything, like, uh... Did you happen to I, see how I, many I, there were? He said three to four. Um, I will look, uh, and Charles will look at the mayor and say, were there, like, any rumors of, like, uh, maybe uh, monsters activities in the place? Like, places, uh, like, uh, parts of uh, these facets that are, the, like... The wilds do have occasional monsters and such mm. in the areas. Um, I, so, so I wouldn't venture too far out, especially toward the volcano. Um, so there, there's rumors, or not rumors, um, there's occasional, um, rock monsters and uh, the uh, one or two drakes in that direction. Um, I wouldn't go any further than Lava Zent if I was you guys. Um, mm -hmm. as for around here, I mean, we haven't had any, too many problems, I mean, the last attack of any sort was over a year ago, and that was of a, uh, oh, what was this? I think it was a gargoyle or something of that nature. Something like that. Mm. But even right. then, it didn't really attack. It more landed, smashed some of our pumpkins, and left. I think that's all the information we really can get for now. Yes. Thank you very much for your time. The, the mayor says... Uh, if you need to rest again, the house is yours. We have we have several empty ones, so. Oh, neato. Much Thank appreciated. You. All right. All right. Do you guys want to head out on the in the direction of where we understand the attack was? Yeah. See if we can find some signs. Yeah. Hell, we might even get ambushed ourselves. Um, real quick, that'd be interesting. Um, does anyone here have to leave at exactly before seven o'clock? You mean 1 p.m.? Or, yeah, sorry, in 30 minutes. <laughs> sorry, 30 minutes. <laughs> Local times, yeah. No, no, I'm just teasing you. Yeah. Can we push? Because I don't know how long the fight's going to take. Just want to make sure. Okay, <laughs> we're, well, we're I, okay but if we're going to have a fight, I kind of end it early because I have work tonight. Yeah, okay. This seems like a good place to end it here. Uh, yeah. That's why I was saying, like, let's just, yeah. Um,. You guys are about to head out and to investigate uh, the goblin attack. We're off to see mm, the uh, goblins. Terrible goblins of snow. A good session, everyone. Good session. Quite well, I think. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah. Okay, I like that now there, it then implies that we're playing a D&D &D game, but you used a, your character voice, so there's a DM DMing our characters. So it's Absolutely. like three layers. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed I'm glad the role like session. I enjoy I arguing with you, Phoenix. You did. What? I, I'm glad you guys did do the wolf pelt mission. I am very glad. Because <laughs> I was like, yes. shit, I gotta do this plot point some other how. <laughs> yep. So. Uh, well, what was the original way? We're gonna find it in the herb? No, that I mean that was the uh, the wolf mission was for that plot point. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. happen. It was always gonna happen. So. Mm. Things happen like, in, around the world, regardless if you are interacting with them or not directly. Just like how the missions board, you know, you guys didn't have to pick herbs. You could have done the um, 
the um, um, bandit one. So, yep. or the delivery. Okay. Completionist well. brain hates it, but that's okay. My completionist brain is like, but the missions are gone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you not want to do all the side quests before you do the no, main wait. one. It's yeah. going to get to the point where you guys are like, we like iron missions. Psh, we're gold rankers. We're too good for iron missions. Pshaw. And we get to the point where it's like, we don't have time for missions. The world's falling apart. We have to do yeah, story yeah, shit. It's, it, it, it's going to get to the point where you guys aren't doing any missions anymore. I, I, I'll be honest. The missions are to introduce you to the world, not to be the. Great way to introduce us to the world. Huh? I love it. I think it's a great way to introduce us to the world and the yep. sets and stuff. Thanks. It means okay. a lot to me. So, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm yeah, you can just set the recording. Yeah. Yep.